Hi. Hey. How's it going? Welcome to the Christmas episode. And I don't know how you feel about Christmas cabbage, but when I think of Christmas, when I think of 2018, this might be a little too loud. But we're gonna keep going. I think of one thing, and I think of really the children of the world coming together, singing, holding hands. <laughs> okay, I love you. Excuse me, Count. Oh, um, hey. And you know, if I, if, if I really look at it as I look at it as one wish, right? If I had that one wish, I would be for the children of the world to hold hands and to sing. But. Count, hold on. If I want to have a second wish, though, right? Like, you know, people want a second wish. You know, they don't want to be like you, like Ray J, just have one wish, right? They want to have a second wish, and that second wish would be for a lot of money, right? So I would hopefully like uh, a huge sum of money, not not too much, but maybe something along the lines of maybe sixty-nine million dollars, you know, to be evenly spread out. So therefore, I can fund this all the children coming together thing, right? Because this will be you know flying them in, you have the scheduling and whatnot. This is several million, so you have to be, do that. So sixty-nine million for my second wish. Yeah, <laughs> 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 oh, eagles, okay, eagles, yes. Yeah. They were in concert, yeah. So if I really want to, things come in threes, right? So I wanted to figure, like, maybe I should have a third wish, right? So if I have this third wish, I figure, what, you know, I have this money, and what, what does money really get you, right? As you, yeah. I didn't know if the chair was going to spin like that. Christmas tree. I, with 69 million, you can get a little bit more than a Christmas tree. So what I was thinking is like, you know, you have all these IG models, right? You know, all these women, you know, book, you know, for Gmail, for bookings, things of this nature. Oh, yeah. So I figured we get all the broads. <laughs> 69 million dollars will facilitate bringing in all the broads, and then we have money left over to have the children of the world. There you go, plenty children and broads. There you oh, go. Maybe, but they'll be holding hands and singing. Not top five. So then we have one final thing. I totally forgot. We have to have re revenge on people. We have to go and we have to take people out. People piss us off all the time. Some people, you know, a lot of people didn't show up tonight because uh, you know, the sound guy gone, Gina there, all the bubbles gone. So let's, let's redirect this whole thing. We're gonna go revenge against everybody. That's number one. Then we go number two. We get the six nine million dollars. Six nine million dollars then facilitates the broads. Broads will come in at set three and the final for the children of the world. Hold their hands. Hold hands. And sing. Merry Christmas. Sing. Sing. Merry sing. Christmas. There, alright. Okay, and sing. There you go. There you go. Okay, that's one. Okay. Five. Five. Production goal, right? We oh, got is video, this a we got audio version. Okay, you don't even want to This is a taping okay. video. Okay. Stand over there. Let's okay, go. Okay. Up. Uh, what the heck? What's, what kind of introduction was that? That was not. That was a quote intro. Then we're gonna play the music. Oh, we're gonna do the recording. Okay. 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 Do you know? Show Really? I think only Parlis came. Well, you had like three other guys on it, right? Well, it was like me, Wade, Well, and Parlis. And then like Lofa like looking Lofa confused. Lofa is looking like confused. Parlis. Like he's confused right now. He's always confused. But Shout out to Omi Twist. He's still yes. the homie. Yes. Lost, but still the homie. Oh, yeah, see? We're, that's just a, a sample of all the controversial things that are going to happen yeah. for this Christmas special. So I'm going to cut to the chase, okay? Rah. Where you been? Why, 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 why. You tell me right now. You look into my eye. <laughs> what, well, you what happened what, to you? You know what happened between you and me, bro. No one needs to know, bro. We go tell the okay, world. Okay, okay, okay. This is what happened, okay? Yeah. One day, no, actually not really. Just 
the business, you know, we did the podcast before, right? At the store. Was at 2009 South King Street. Correct. Light sleeper shop, number yes. one shop. Number one streetwear. We did it for three years? 2016. something episodes. 100 episode, which was actually the dinner. Insanity, and we didn't even do like a special 100 episode thing. You're just like, well, hey, I, didn't, I, didn't wanna, I didn't wanna do something big. I just wanted to kind of like transition and then look at you now, bro. Look at this. Bro. Shout out to the Lord. Hi, bro. bro. I'm, I'm tired all day, every day now. <laughs> bro. Every hour of the you hour. Back when we used to DJ, you was tired already, bro. Correct. Yo, mixes was tired, bro. Yeah, oh, nah, you know, mix oh. good, bro. Top five mixes oh. in Hawaii. Top oh, yeah. five mixes, bro. Oh. Oh, that's very nice. That's and on the side note, Gary Owens is on Instagram. That's I, scary. I didn't tell you off, off the mic. That's scary. So we're going to announce this to everyone for now. <laughs> Gary Owens, who he is? Hey, well, I'm going to family, bro. I'm going to talk about Jamal uh, later on, but he did reveal the age. Oh, but Jamal gave his real age. Of DJ Gary Owens. Oh. He did not. Okay, before we get into that, the yes. reason why what I happened, dismissed myself on the podcast sad. wasn't too controversy, wasn't too any kind of any kind pretty, of nannies yeah. that I scratched my nose was because I had Designer Con and then we had Thanksgiving, then we had Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and then we had Cyber, Cyber Monday, Monday, and then boom, I went crazy after that. Then it's holiday season, so I couldn't. You just said no can. Just couldn't do it, bro. It was all sad. Cry, anxiety, <laughs> antipsychotics, whatever, value. You don't, you, you don't know the, the thing. No, so, I gotta say, that I'm proud of you, dude. <laughs> Sounds what? bad, it's like gay yeah, almost. But no, for real. Because look, well, look, look, look at what you're in the pot. Well, look at Eminem's, bro. Christmas. Why did you have to say that? White like, chocolate, <laughs> bro. Really, bro. There you go, Eminem, bro. I had it in the back of my head. You better. But no, for real. No, I like the, how the podcast is elevated from our Hanabata days. Well, as I've told you before, I'm going to say it again. I, I've told you if, if I can't do another show right. with any other guy except you, right. that, that, that's it. And I uh, say this truthfully, okay? So that's why I say, no, no cry yet. We have a lot more <laughs> BS to cover. I'm, I'm just crying, saying, well, if, I'm gonna, if I'm going to do the show, it has to be uh, something drastically different. No, it's flattering, though. Different. It's very flattering. You got um, a homegirl, right, from the Bay, right? Right, so I figured uh, it has to be something totally off yeah. kilter. So that's good. let's get Jaylene. She's 22. Young. I'm old. Whatever happened to our millennial? Where know. is our millennial? My, well, she's kind of MIA because oh. she kind of had a surgery. What are you saying? You can't stop her talking. <laughs> she's not listening. She ain't gonna listen to she's this. She's not listening. Watch. She's watching she's anime right now and she's gonna get ramen right and now, she's gonna boomerang a dog. That's what she's doing. <laughs> okay? She boomerang dog? You boomerang dog. She has a dog. <laughs> I show sad things of the dog. I show the dog not climbing on okay, the couch. Okay, here we go. Do you see <laughs> She... Shout out to people who... Watch you that. had an IG of your pet. No. Okay, what are you good. talking about? Good, bro. Oh, no, wait. I, I, get, I get problems with people <laughs> with IGs of their pet. Actually, Stella has one. Sorry, Spock. Nothing. Actually, plenty of people. Forget it. Nothing. Nothing. Forget it. Move on to the next topic. Only because I don't know that pet, bro. Bottom line is this. The millennial. And they kind of like my page. You want the pet to like your page? <laughs> what? They kind of like my pictures, bro. No, they kind of. Yeah, it's, okay. I'll give you that. You should not follow some kind of a... Uh, like corgi or fake flowers, or, fake flowers, or, or fake flowers the Chesky. flowers or something. Don't because the, the guys, yeah. the dog's not gonna like your thing. Anyway, so off, like, off the, the path. Yeah, basically it was just at the take care of light sleepers. Pretty yes. much. I mean, if anybody, there's nothing real. Yeah. That was it. That's it, basically. That was basically on it. Yeah. Because it's like literally the podcast is taking off and it's in a great place right now. So I was like, either I could. Yeah, great time, time to leave, bruh. Hey, you know what? I always go out on top, bruh. When I finished the Light Sleeper show five years, people was right. You know, people wrote letters to the advertiser about saving the show. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. And then some dude was like, "Hey, tell that guy get off the air." Some guy rebuttaled with the letter, yeah. saying, "Get that guy off the air." I was reading this. I'm like, "Bro, this is like that's ridiculous." ridiculous. Who was that? You remember his name? I don't know. Just Bone. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Just Bone. And he's like, "I can get something." <laughs> and then his career took off after that. Justin Kanashiro, Nililani Hawaii. He's now the, the sensation he is right now. Yeah. But I don't know, that's pretty crazy. Somebody would, would say, get yeah, out of here. So it. somebody wrote a letter too. You know, at the beginning when you open the paper and it tells all the letters. Yeah. Oh, save like Sleeper Show. So I was super flattered. People were telling me, hey, bro, someone wrote a letter to save the show. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Then the next day, someone wrote a letter saying, hey, get that guy off the air. He's taking a tax people's money. And I'm like, shut up. Bruh, I did it for free. 
Right. I was there on Christmas. We were there. Our timer was there. You were there Christmas, New Year's Eve, Thanksgiving. Yeah. People pop fireworks, but guess who was on the air? Yeah. Me, bro. That is right. I don't know if anybody was listening. Well, I thought you were there. But I popped fireworks. Yeah, plenty of good times about that. That was a great time. That was a good we'll time. have a special guest coming on talking about that. Yes. But that's the reason why I kind of exited the, the podcast. Right, because it, it was on top too. So I realized that you know what, hundred hundred episodes, a dinner, uh, we're, it's, it's on top right now. You know. Yeah. I'm like, this is the best time to do it. Yeah. Then my son started playing basketball. Right. Which was the kid of the year, remember? Yeah, it was kid of the year, 2017. Yeah. So he started playing club ball. If anybody knows kids sports. Oh, here we go. And then there's like kids, there's like community level, pal level. Yeah. When you start getting good and competitive, you can take it to these clubs where you have to pay. Right. And pay to play and then it's right. like almost like developmental right yeah, so back my son's playing in that you know he's doing all right so, he's, yeah he's, he's been getting better better right? yeah, I mean, but now he's playing guys are legit like yeah. everybody's the same so it's not like you can take advantage of a kid that just kind of like digs their nose and stuff like no right, everybody right, right. can like eat snacks yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. oh trust me i had kids eat snacks. snacks when i was coaching okay i said get water break it's what they did Check their phone and eat chips, bro. Wow. That's I was 20 like, <laughs> yeah. That's 2018. Wow, we run sprints back in Pop Warner when we did oh, that kind of stuff. Gosh, old man. But anyway. Okay, yes. You got back in my days. Yeah, you were, you're starting to get into that, so. <laughs> so that's pretty much it, but bro. Family really, and light yes. sleepers, you know what I mean? You, you like, have two kids. I had to focus you're on You're doing light sleepers by yourself. Right. Okay. And on the real, I really thought, like, man, I talked to my wife, I was like, I wonder if Aaron's gonna, what's that's gonna think about it? Like, what if he's gonna be mad, sad, piss off? He can still be my friend. All the above, bro. Check <laughs> <laughs> him all off. But I was mostly sad. No, I couldn't get mad at you. No, okay, I was kind of sad too, cause I still wanted to do it, but I know I had to make a, uh, like a, a, a life decision to be like, you know, cause right. in no ways will I going to survive November, yep. doing a podcast. Like, and even if we took a break, it's like we should be doing it, cause it's like the main time people are listening. I feel. A lot to say, a lot to address. So. Well, right. And if this was a, a, a good medium for you as well, because then you can address a lot of things yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. you would go and talk right. about on, on Facebook or what yeah. have you. And, and well, I just have to say that if it wasn't for you, I would not be here. No, because if it wasn't for you to ask me, I would not be yeah. excited to want to continue to do this thing. I was talking that you did it, bro. Well, and I owe this all And I still think Sleep Times Over is the number one podcast in Hawaii. Oh, hey, thanks. Penny Biter is coming, bro. Actually. Yeah, see. Any biter. No, nah, not biters. Uh, not biters. A lot of just, people want to do podcasts now. I'm like, know. guess what, bro? You guys don't got the commitment like us. And you're not guys going to be tired. No, for real. It was like, oh, bro, Kevin, I just start a podcast. I was like, just do it. Yeah, don't you no. just hate that? Like, I'm like, people like, ask you. Oh, what do you mean? I said, just do it. I grabbed two of my right. mics, remember? Right. Two of my mics, right. interface, laptop. <laughs> we sat in front of my shop, press record. Yeah. What's the name of the show? Yeah. Sleep, let's sleep. Really you thought of it the night before. Uh, sleep time's over. Okay. Yeah. I just, we just went. Yeah. So there's no real uh, formula to it. I still remember when you asked me. I was at your shop. I was just like, I was to the, to the <laughs> right of you. Because you finally joined social media. Yeah. I felt Everybody's like, like, where is that horse? Because I was tired. Literally. Tired this kind of stuff. Bondo, 69, OVF, right, OVF, right. OVF Kuffa, Toga, Kuffa, now, and All of a sudden, I see you start following him. Yeah. I was like, who's this fit, fit sports guy? Yeah. Bro? I was like, oh shoot, is that Morris, bro? Oh, crap. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, did I? I yes. Probably like, oh, I'm, I like your pay. I like his Oh, yeah, he thanks. He let me back. And <laughs> yeah. After that, I was like, you know, I think it's time. So I opened the shop and I was like, I think it's time to do a podcast. Because yeah. Hawaii's podcast landscape is still nothing going on. I mean, there's a few out there. There's a few. And shout out to all the homies that supported uh, yeah. Sleep Time's Over that um, we kind of you know network with. I still keep in touch with those guys. Right. But um, it's still open landscape, so people, man. Yeah, it, all it takes is mics, a computer, and commitment, really. Because we, we went every Wednesday. You can ask yeah. wives, you can ask my business, yeah. customers, yeah. walking in while we were recording any kind. So the girl, the one lady went, went one like, lady, lick the screen, lick the, the screen, bus, or what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Any kind. And then, uh, what's her name came in the first episode? The very first guest was Jara. Jara? Just Jara. Yeah. The Micronesian. Yeah, pretty yeah. Micronesian, bro. There you go. She's a pretty Micronesian. You don't, you don't really well, put you pretty in Micronesian. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> pretty Beetlejuice. You don't say that, bro. Uh, you don't tell me that. But uh, she was the first guest, bro. Hey, I don't know. Okay, you know, it takes, like, it usually takes, uh, takes, like, you know, 
<laughs> like what's that called? Uh, races to not races. What do you call it? Like, to kind of evolve into like you know, who like, uh, uh, right? So like a hole right no, now. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, this is three times. So, so back in the day, it was like I think the Laotian and Vietnamese, right? It was like the new immigrants, right? right. Mm. And I had a friend named Sam I think I told you guys this story. Did I tell you the story about Sam Pet? I Toughest the ocean I knew, bro. He could handle everything. Shout out to Sam Pet and Kaba Kiyo. Skateboarding, fall on his head, get back up, bro. When, when was this? This was when I was a skate a lot. Okay. Kaba He's, but he fall on his head skateboarding. Okay. That's why I knew the ocean was tough, bro. Get up, say, bro, I can handle, I can handle. Mm. And he keeps skateboarding, bro. So, right there, respect for the ocean. So, La what's tougher, the ocean or Micronesians? Bro. If you had the rumble. Right well, if I have to rumble, bro, I take my ocean brothers and sisters, mm. bro. They can make the good chicken and they can die. Right. <laughs> they can maneuver. The ocean bro. chicken, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then from there, you know, spark the term, oh. uh, Speaking of Micronesians. What? Mi oh, my micro moku. Micro moku, if you guys don't know. Upper we moku. created, we created this. Yeah. And it should be adapted in the... The Apua, you like that? Wow. Hawaiian, like, See, this oh, is the land division, cuz. <laughs> We're going to talk some Hawaiian stuff because I've been wanting to talk Hawaiian stuff for a bit. Because since you've gone. Okay, so okay. the so, land division, right? Yeah. Tell them what it is. Well, Micromoku is the upper. Upper. Kiamoku. Yeah. You have lower Kiamoku, which Just is Korean. Korean Moku. Right. And then the Baratani Street is the bridge. That's yeah. the leeway between the two yeah. factions. So that is very tiny, the one that separates them out. So yeah. Micromoku, Kriomoku, as long as they stay on their border, yeah, bro. all is well. It's, it's like, like, it's like the Jets, around. it's like the Jets, bro. When you're right, the jet. Jets and the Shocks. Yeah, they yeah. stab Same. each other with knives and they go back with tattoos. A lot of knives, right. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so. who the heck is I clear with that? I don't know. Uh, skip times over, ocean people, evolving. Oh, yeah, yeah. Top so pretty Micronesian. <laughs> <laughs> the first episode. Oh, yeah, first episode. Yeah. Led to that. Yeah, right. All of this stuff led yeah. to our October of 2018. Right. You decided to leave. I said. I said. And here we are. And you're doing good, bro. Yeah. Proud of you, bro. High five for yeah, that. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Go. I, I try. Here we go. That was, a pretty, on, that was a pretty lame high five. That was the worst <laughs> high five ever. Yeah, that that's, like have, that's like when you have that one friend with the lip hand that shake hands like this. That was, oh, oh, the one doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the worst. Bring your hand. Do you notice that? Like, people, they don't. You just shake, shake like a man. Bruh, I try. No, bro. One hand. There was some. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. That, that, that to another thing we created, which was the uh, Pringles Pornhub. Oh. Right. Gutter gutter nerds. The gutter nerds. Gutter nerds. The gutter nerds. The guys. Pringles, yeah. Pringles eating eating, eating Pringles, going uh, watching Pornhub, and just staying in the parents' basement. That was it. Yeah. And then evolution from there, right? Wow, we created a lot of things, bro. We'll figure. Anyway, out. podcasting is hard, but it's fun. Okay. Do it. That's all you gotta do. Oh okay. yeah. No need fancy mics. You don't need fancy cameras. When you do 120 episodes, then you need the fancy lights. And yeah, we got the fancy lights. This is awesome, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. Things cost sixty nine dollars each. Bro, that's sixty nine. Times Time sixty nine. Times sixty. You know how like it's one times anything is that number. Correct. But for this instance, sixty nine times sixty nine is sixty nine. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 all right. <laughs> good, why, good. Why are we saying math? That? Why I, don't, bro? Why okay, for everyone, let's just, we gotta clarify this. I don't know, Why bro. we say 69 on this show? Okay, it's because of one man. It's one man's name, DJ Liger Woods. Mm. It is a guy that has been around forever. He, pretty much forever. He was the original uh, camera guy in the club. He was the social media guy. He was the dude. Before social media. Yeah, before social media. Yeah. Legit film camera in the club, taking pictures with the chicks. Yeah, MySpace. Like with the fake kisses. That, Yep. Like, Kiss on that cheek. Dude, no, but it's, yeah, no, for real. Asian Avenue. Before anybody had cameras in the oh, club, yeah. Wando yeah. was the man with the cameras in the club. OVF. Yeah, and yeah. taking pictures of all the girls. That's right. But he wasn't a creep, creeper. He was not. He was just the guy. He paused on that. He was just a... 69 second <laughs> pause, bro. But that is where we got the whole 69. He, I don't know why he created that. Because it used to be 69 up the butt, if you remember. I was trying to avoid. I was trying to so This is a year. This is the end of the year. This is the time where we reflect. This the holiday season is the season of perpetual hope. So this is what we're going to discuss and reflect. I had to go to the church at 69. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's. What was that? That's like. I don't even want. To, I don't even know what. Doesn't my heart soul yeah. Just. <laughs> Good, yeah. Carbonite you. So that was where sixty nine came oh, from. Crap. 
Let's do the thing now. We do the recap. It's the, it's the God, we're both married, dude. Tough, oh, forget We get that. zero chicks, bro, with this podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> zero, because. <laughs> Nothing would happen. I love my life. Nothing. Hey. Hey, shout out. Shout, shout out to yeah. No, for real, I don't, think, I don't think guys, that if we're single, we get no chicks, I think. We didn't get no chicks when we were DJing. What are you talking about? Yeah, talk about for yourself. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, 30, 69. <laughs> Hourly. Really. See, you don't even know, bro. I could go, I could go nuts on this thing. The whole, anyway. Oh, 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 oh. That gets a how's you? Oh, yeah, who are you yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. We were back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a nah, 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 you have to be sure. I don't know how you do this, bro. Literally, you're like. Oh, bro, I'm tired, bro. I told you guys are psychotics. Yeah, psychotics. Big eyes, so the mother is more. You have big eyes? No, big eyes. <laughs> big eyes. Wow. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about your <laughs> oh, mine eyes later. Okay. We're talking about this right now. What happens if you have a recap that you can oh, summarize? Wow. A monthly recap. Do you have something that you can put Ooh. together? Okay. Since October. Wow, this is like the biggest recap we've ever had. Just to make this go on for 69 okay, hours. With Let's the go. podcast, went to LA, did Designer Con, which is a uh, uh, convention of uh, creative minds, you know. Yeah. Uh, and right, then uh, did that at Anaheim, like, really fun. Yeah. Did really good. No, for real. Shout out to the mainland, bro. They're showing us so much love. Yeah. LA, try to go to uh, Five Points in New York. Yeah. So, because oh. New York's been hitting us up. Oh, okay. Like sleepers roll so are you like playing, that. is that what you're playing for 2019? Oh yeah, guaranteed, dude. Like for okay. real. Like this okay. Christmas and just being in LA, we sell our stuff at a shop called Quest. Yes. It's a comic book hip hop shop. They've been yes. just selling out, literally. Good. You know what I mean? So nah I knew dude. Yeah, we're it, it like sleepers is hip hop based, dude. We're not right. hype based, we're not Right. We I do what I know and I love. We're staying true to the game. And I think because the nineties is coming back in, this whole thing, you know, it's it's, it's new. we're ready, dude. We're ready for it, you know right. what I mean? Kids are saying drip. Who had the OG drip? Right. Night sleepers, no, bruh. I'm ahead of the terminology, bruh. And this is what? Yes, you are. Like Boston rappers. You get that terminology? Wow, I, I don't think anyone in a 20 mile radius is going to know what the fuck is. But yeah, Kanye did these two. Okay, so. But that's why I'm with, I always. Uh, and I'm passionate when I tell you when, when you have these events at yeah. your store yeah. and you have all these guys that hang out and just shaking hands, smoke a cigarette, and they don't do nothing. They don't smoke cigarette anymore. They, they beat. Us. Okay, got it. But the bottom line is they're not buying nothing, okay? And I call them out each and every time I do the show and I'm saying, you guys are a bunch of hip hop peepers, is what you guys are. You guys are a bunch of cheap bastards and you guys walking around thinking that you're going to shake hands, thinking you're do nothing. That's why. And I'm, I'm going to still do this despite the fact yeah. you're not on this show. I'm going to still promote it's and good. still. Where do the kind of and shirts and you the best? Because it doesn't. It you you need to because just by yourself. You're you're by yourself in this business, yeah. right? You, you, someone got back you up here. Take it, you know. Got my back. And that's it. Got your back, bro. So that's why all these guys when you do these events. That's so what like uh, Toy Story, like Woody. Uh, <laughs> What's the other guy? Round up, round up. Well, we're dressed like toys at this point. But then I'm just saying, you have these art shows. You have all these kind. The guy with the mac and cheese at Rockham. Right, that was a good event. That was a great event. Yeah, so that was a good event. Shout out to Rockers, dude, for real. He made the food, people came, they bought the food. Dope. Smart thinking. That was a, so that was an interesting event because we had like the turn up kids there, the boom bap kids, the new no, but, school rappers. That was the, and I was there. The lit kids, they're on fire. Everyone was there and people were spending money. Yeah. That's the thing. People need to support local, they need to support all these other guys, not just stand around, smoke, babe, you know, chew gum, I don't know, smash, <laughs> do something, shake hands. That's all people do is shaking hands. That's Jamal's job, bro. Speaking of Jamal. Where's Jamal coming today, dude? That'd be so awesome. I texted him. Oh, okay. But he's got to work. Okay. But speaking of Jamal, who will be on this show nice. soon. Yes. I ran into him. Oh. When he ran into me. When I DJed at Nobu this past Friday. Fine establishment. I put, as you know, Nobu, you just throw the money on the ground. It's an automatic tree. You walk in, your wallet disappear. You buy something for appetizers, $90,000. You like going to these places that make your wallet disappear. I'm DJing there. What are you going to do? You go all these fancy places. I'm bro. not going anything fancy. Eat free rice, bro. Bring Where have you got free rice? Sushi no King, bro. We're going 10 30. Let's go. Speaking of Sushi King, get parking now. Because that gym, the BJ Penn gym, bro. So now oh, you can actually eat sushi. Get annoying, bro. You get annoying. Get it night, bro. Two different guys. I don't want time Two to keep track. Two different errors, bro. I don't want time to keep track, but let me tell you something. We need to keep track on kilowatts. 
Who, who doesn't? You don't need to put a tile track around him. You know the tile thing. Oh right. You could, you could do that, right? And knock him out and plant him. Did, did you know he's no longer kilowatts to mongoose? Yeah, he's jamwatts, right? No, he's just kilowatts. Oh. He was like, he was like, hey, you know, hey, is that, you know, just let us know. I, I don't know, you know, it's a mongoose anymore. Just, just kilowatts. Oh, I <laughs> does that kind of thing. <laughs> That's the <laughs> <laughs> That's I first thing. You don't know who watts. Jamal is. Uh, no, he's just kilowatts. He found the fountain of youth. He never Everybody ages. Knows Jamal. Okay. And it looks like he aged like maybe three, four years. Vampire. Possibly. Yeah. It could be vampire blood, but I think. Well, so. well Jamal he is a he is a guy we've known forever. He is a promoter. He's promoted many successful events. In many the many world. stories about that guy. Quadraphonics. Yeah, many you, things. Yeah, I haven't told my story on, on the podcast. <laughs> about what? About when I, when he went. I was in, I was about to do my radio show. Oh, I don't want to say it, dude. Uh-huh. You don't be that guy. Well, I got this story, but I don't say it. Okay, no, I'm going to do my radio show, right? So I'm walking in, it's about 8, 8 45, with the 7 yeah. Eleven University. Walked in, about to run out. Jamal comes in with these two, two chicks in bikinis. He's wearing, uh, 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 what is that called? Board shorts, right? Okay. Here we go, let's go, it's late night. <laughs> So anyway, Jamal is known for some things in his life, okay? <laughs> so I know where you're going with You this. see two five looking women in bikinis come in with Jamal, right? And I'm like, oh Jamal, what's up? You come to the show. He's like, yeah, bro, he's wearing these shorts. And I'm like, oh bro. And then I just walk out, walk out, walk out. That's in the story. Oh, that's it, okay. That's it, bro. PG, cuz. Once again, if you know who Jamal is. Uh, promoter extraordinary. <laughs> Man of many talents. That's a, that's a bad. He's an actor. That was a, that a, was a pretty was, good. Was a man. Sick story, but you. Anyway, but anyway, yeah. It's, that's uh, my recap of what I did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, to to segue back into okay. Jamal, the guy is on Facebook. Yeah. I posted that I was going to be DJ Noble. Yeah. He came down. Right. He apparently lives near there, and he just came by himself. He just showed up. He just showed up, and then where I'm at. DJing at Nobu is, is by the door to the lounge, is the entrance way okay. to the lounge. So Jamal's just standing there by me, right? He, you know, he's, he's got all these, you know, he's laughing, he's doing his comments, you know. It's, it's all very entertaining. And then all these people are walking in, he's pretty much the door guy. So he's like, hey, come on in, hey, come on, be shy, come in, hey, hey, come on. He knows yeah, everybody. Hey, how's it, how's it? And then, then the big thing happened. Literally for the Next two hours, he knew everyone that walked by him. Right, they all everybody. came up and said what up to him. They all came, shook his hand. Every okay, quick, single, literally every single guy. Let me interject real quick, okay? There's a point in my life where I was going to Sandy's every morning, right? To body work, okay? Yeah. So I'd go, seven in the morning. Okay? Nobody on the beach. Oh. Nobody. So I've been going for the whole summer. Go Sandy's, go Sandy's. Oh. I come out of the water one time. Okay, the beach is empty. You're bringing up board shorts again, aren't you? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the story. Okay. So I'm walking out, walking to the shower, right? Gotta go work. Guess who comes out of nowhere? Kevin! Kevin! Turn my head. Jamal, bruh! Yeah. Jamal! Not surprised. Oh, what's up, bruh? How you doing? Yeah. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. I didn't see him on the beach. He literally popped out of nowhere. I was like, Jamal, what are you doing here? Wow. He's like, oh, bruh, I go beach in the morning. I was like, but I've been at the beach. He wow. literally is like, like a kahuna, bro. I just, he is. He's, he's, a, he's an alien. No, I was like shocked because I was like, okay, so being in the water right. and you're looking out, right. you don't, I see nobody on the beach, right? right. So I'm over there, catch a couple of waves. Right. You know, I try to do this little regimen for like little summer, go beach, go work. And literally comes out of, I don't know if he was like sleeping in the bushes, passed <laughs> out. No, but it was like, the, it was like the freak. I was like, what the heck? Right. He literally, I walk right. into the showers. And boom, Jamal comes out of nowhere. Right. He's, he's an enigma. And I even told that Jamal, what the heck were you doing there? Yeah. He's like, ah, he's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> I was like, that's that's what, that's what he does. Like, he's a magic man. That's what he does. And, and you know, he's all about you know conspiracy theories oh. and you know oh. everything. But then, so then he had. So speaking of that, right? He has stories on stories, right? Yeah. So the magical thing he did that night, on Friday night. He, I don't know how it came up, but he would throw out random topics to me. Now, this is while I'm DJing now, so yeah. it was windy that night. So I got wind blowing over here. Oh, the thing about like, it's a cables, huh? Well, good thing. Everything would be golf, kappa, kappa. No, for but real. Then everything is, so I got wind, I got him, yelling, talking <laughs> comments, laughing. And then he would, he would mention random people, like from the, from the past, right. like, that I would know. Wow. Like, okay, like I used to work at Umeke Market, okay. right? And he would mention like, he, it came up in the topics, and then he was like, oh, so you know this girl that used to work at Umeke Market? I'm like, 
Well, I haven't seen her since then, but yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Within the hour, that girl shows up to know. This is Jamal? a true story. He has voodoo dolls, I'm like, bro. how is this possible, Jamal? What, what, you were just talking about her. Hey, hey, hey. Like, <laughs> yes, we were. What are we doing? How is she here? Bro, Jamal has just got the... Bro, Jamal. Bring some in. It's amazing. He's descendant of freaking, I don't know, Ron. A dire wolf and uh, Stark Clan, or I don't know. Stark Clan. Ron, I don't know. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> Random references, but Ron, it's just, it was amazing. He's a war, he's a war, right? Like, his, his eyes flip back. And he, of course, right. And he starts seeing visions and he meets people. And he's bringing people in? He was shaking everybody's hand. Did it happen again after that? Yes. It, it happened two other times. It was one other time. Hey, you know, like, you know, these, you know, you've mentioned these two, you know, these so and so, so and so, you're on the podcast, you know, and then <laughs> literally the two random guys he said yeah, were walking over. It's like, oh, so, no, no, no. what? How are you doing this? <laughs> I don't even remember who they were, like two guys, two like local guys, like, okay, you know, we just talked about you. Mm. Like, it was just amazing. It was just amazing. And then, of course, you know, then he goes into, yeah, you know, I think we should promote this night. And I make this night. Oh, like, oh, oh no. Oh, no. Let's not do that again. And then I, I, I played a 10, and he's like, ah, it's like I can play a Play two um, That's not my decision. Oh, because they could have a mic, bro. Oh. Come on, I want to get a glass back and go to the moon. It'll be over. No? Yeah, he can still speak. But he knew the employees, he knew guys in their 20s. He knew that. Right, you know another Jamal story. And what? Okay, remember um, Wu Tang played at uh, the group After Dark? After Dark. Yeah. And then I think uh, Stone Brew was playing outside, yeah? Yeah. So me and EP, what year was that? What year was that? 97? We kind of knew everybody, but it was me and EP, and then we went to inside, and then went outside, because it was an open mic, right? And then Buzz was rhyming, and then um, uh, Casper was rhyming. And yeah, that was a pretty, like... I think, I, I think, time, I think time was rhyming. Yeah, the 10. Me and EP, it was clear, we didn't know that much people, we, you know, we kind of get our feet. So we just kind of just watched everybody rhyme. Then Jamal comes out of nowhere, and he starts rhyming. Then he starts, we were like, oh, this guy is sick. But then he never rhymed his own lyrics. Mm -hmm. He ran Pharaoh Watch, bro. Yeah. Organized. He even get him a graphic. Me, you know, 32 bit. I'm like, oh! Very bizarre. Me, me and EP was like, dude, he's spinning Pharaoh Watch's lyrics. So we're like, he's dope, but like, I mean, yeah, I don't think we, we fully met him yet. Was that the only time that he was caught using someone else's lyrics? Uh, no, I think, no, no, I know he uses that a lot as a starter. I, I thought I can, all I can remember is he always uses. Pharaoh Monch lyrics as that Pharaoh Monch and lyrics as goes a start. Into his thing. Yeah, then he goes off. But he did like the whole verse. Right? Right. And dude on the rim, it was really sick though. Right. But you know, 97, 98, you're like, fuck this guy. Like, of course. But it was it was right. like it's hard because he was dope. Right. So he was doing it dope. It's hard to do Pharaoh Monch dope. Right. But he did all those lyrics. Like even get him a graphic. Neo right. Gino, 30 to make That was the style. Yeah, that was the style. And he was doing that. We're like, oh, oh. Right. And we're like, uh, we didn't really know who he was, but you know, right. eventually we met him and he took us to uh, was a club in Waikiki, uh, oh. around 90s, 90s. Valentino's. Valentino's. <laughs> so Jamal, yeah, Jamal introduced us to a lot of people. Because that was the spot. Yeah, but I mean, that's another Jamal story. Just keeps popping up. So. Right. Anyway. <laughs> and then it went to him doing the song at AC Alone. Right, he did <laughs> with Cap with Capital Fat. He brought down AC Alone. Right. right. The whole thing evolved and evolved. That's right, man. Uh, beat played. So I'm the something in South Central to the sandy beaches of Waikiki. Yeah, he, he, I think he's a find that. Dude, I'm free. I still have that. Free, free, dude. That's what's so. Oh, shout out to Daddy One because his whole his, his production. That was ninety seven, ninety eight, yeah. right? Yeah, ninety eight ish. Yeah, that's home. That was pretty that's groundbreaking. Cool. I was like, oh, AC Alone. Dude, dude that so. song is sick. Like so, him and AC killed it. And there was a posse cut with AC. Were you, were you on it? AC, Jamal, and all the Nakas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was yeah. Like, that was dope yeah. too. Like, psh, dude, but I think Jamal's collab with, I mean, uh, versus with AC was like perfect, yeah. dude. Like, they just bounced back and forth. That was a great show, though, too. The, the whole Capital Fat that, scene. Well, we're going to get into that. Like, yeah, yeah. I have a that was super that, dope, man. AC got both of the mics and then. So. He started, like, bagging. He let people freestyle and he freaking murked. He killed everybody. Yeah. Anyway. That was that was one other thing. But, Jamal yeah. got stories. Jamal's gonna come on this. He's shout already out to Jamal, said, bro. Yes, shout out to Jamal. 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 We're gonna reminisce some more about the years of hip hop. We have a, we're gonna do a special Rushmore tonight. Okay. So let's go. Let's go take a break here. And then we will come back with the Rushmore. Also, we need to announce who our guest. Are we announcing it now? Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Okay. The 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 well, it fits in perfectly, is what we're thinking. Exactly. We gotta say. It's perfect like a six and a nine. Say, announce it, bro. Who is it? Who is it? Who's Your friend, uh, what? I'm doing it. Yes, good, good, yes, 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 yes,
your friend and ours, your favorite artist. Yes. Is he your favorite artist? I have like four of his things. Oh, nice. His name yeah. is, well, we call him Timer, we know him as Timer. Yes. But yeah, he now yes. goes, but has, uh, this guy has a billion different names and a billion crews, guys. Yeah. And he can break it down for you, but I think it's dope. It's almost like next level rebranding. But I, have a, I have a statement to make to what? that gentleman when he comes. Oh, but I, I have something I have to say to him that I've never said to him oh, before. Oh, oh, bro. He's like, 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 it just kind of evolves. Into the evolution. Yeah. You got to change with the time. It's dope. It's dope. And he's done that very well. Yes. And right. robots to the people. Woes, Martin. Timer to us. Yeah. Hidden habitats. You got crazy crew right now with a super dope artist. That, that, yeah. That's what you call it. Escaping my mind. Um, also a DJ now. Yeah. yeah. Only rightfully so. On the real. Yeah. Because dude knows his music. Exactly. It looks and only fitting. It's one of those ones where, you know, like Shepard became a, became a DJ. Yeah, and uh, his is more like he's into like pop. He knows hip hop. He sucks. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Anyway, no, no, let's take a break. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so it's Angry Robots, aka Time to Us. Yes, sir. Uh, sleep time's over. Kevin the Catalyst, DJ Zap Morris here in High Rock. Shout out to uh, the Lord and everybody that came through. Yes, Woo! thank you, everyone. Sleep time's over, Captain the Catalyst, DJ Zach Morris, the Christmas episode. Yes. Nice shirt you got there, buddy. Hey, thanks. So do you. Jingle balls. Yep. Jingle them all. Who's jingle and who's balls? Oh, let's not find out the answer to that. <laughs> who's jingling who's balls? <laughs> who's jingling who's balls? You know, a lot, lot of... You know, I'm trying, to get, oh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get everything out because I'm going to be in the podcast. Is that right? That's like, we're sending yeah. you out of here. That's get it. out of here, bro. Sending you back to where you came from. So... Let's, let's, let's get into uh, let's get into this. What are we doing? I now? want to do a couple of take time, waste time. Sure, okay? let's do it. Let's we gotta, we gotta do this. I do miss this a lot. Miss this. I miss take time. It misses time. you, bro. I'm just saying. I think you take time, waste time. Yeah, yeah okay. Miss you too. Take time, waste time misses you. Oh, I miss you too, Kevin. If I go call up the <laughs> staff. Oh, I miss you too. Take time, waste time. Okay, enough. Let's go. We gotta talk about okay, this. Eminem coming to the stadium. Bro. Take time, waste time. Waste time. You got that right, waste time. Okay, Nobody will give a damn. Listen to this, <laughs> bro. Forget it. Listen to this. You want more tetanus or lost stadium? You want me to bring the tetanus over? Bro, bro, I was at Bruno Mars. Bro, bro, I was at Bruno Mars. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to my plug. That's right, you went to Bruno Mars. Yeah, I got the plug on that one. I got to take my kids. It was good, I got to take my kids and got to see a show. You're going to remember it forever. Bruno Mars is perfect for the family. Yeah. I do not want to see Eminem in the stadium. Exactly. What, what, what do you do? Make everybody get mad. Exactly. What is it? Let's see Stan. And then we'll, we'll cry in the stadium. You know, Forget it. He's gonna lie. You know what they're gonna do, right? You know the phone, the new thing, the phone, ridiculous. Someone should go up there and sneak up there and then battle rap him. Alright, great. That, okay, okay, so anyway, right? anyway, so anyway, I'm back to him Okay, you can have one dude in the middle of the stage with this dude, this thing is With a sweatshirt. Yeah. He's with the sweat, sweatshirt. Yeah, sweatshirt. Not dancing. Goody. No live band. Nope. No dancers. Nope. No opening act. Nope. Eminem rapping. I mean, come on. I mean. No fireworks. No, no tank. I, mean, I want to see sure. Eminem at Pizza. Right. At Beat Root, well, bro. Eminem is an intimate type of rapper. No, yeah. Like, no, no, not no, a guy no. you're gonna put on the stage. Exactly. I want to see him like more intimate, as in like, as in like Republic. Right. Because he spits bars. I mean, even Blazedale, fine. Yeah. 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 You know what he? You know yeah. what the strategy is? I'm thinking. Money. Well, he didn't want to do multiple shows. Oh. So we just put them all in one time. We get all the 20,000 guys. Instead of doing like four sold out 6,000 right, right. shows, let's just do because I'm tired. I'm going to make it a 20,000 show. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. probably what Guns N' Roses was thinking. That's probably what the Eagles no, was thinking. No, but Guns N' Roses, at least they have a whole bag, you know? True, but. Like guitar, you know, like. But they could have easily sold off Blazedale, though. Oh. 6,000 in Blazedale, like, right? And they could do a multiple yeah. three show sellout. But they probably didn't want to do that. They probably got convinced that they did yeah. one show. But live band is, is understandable. That's understandable, right? You have things going on. Because, areas. yeah, things going on. And then you just have a guy. guy. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I don't think he raps the live band. Of course not. Right? No. He might. He might. He might do it as, the, as a, a gimmick. Because I, mean, I don't want to pay $100. That's right, because he's going to have to he's gonna have to step it up. That's right. Because he's gonna he has a stadium, he has this whole space he's got to do with. You can probably What's your favorite Eminem song? I don't know. Special guest, probably. Special guest, maybe. I think so. Yeah, dude, they always do that. I like Eminem. 
Okay, I don't love them. I like Eminem. Name five Eminem songs. Uh, Stan, uh, Stan, Stan, the place where you were. Uh, Stan, hey, deliver. Right, right. Stan by me. And I wasn't uh, a fan. Stuttering Stan. Stuttering Stan, shout out, Mister. <laughs> The only the only song that I ever cared about was when in '98 he released "I Just Don't Give Up." I just don't give up. Which was the independent version, not the Dre producer. Oh no, I played I played his first album on the show. His first the like, first one. Shady EP, I think. It was. Right, that was that was fine. And then the homie Dose battled him, Juice. Yes. Yeah. That's what's crazy. It's crazy is that I was literally like two people away, or te or te technically one one hip hop artist away from Eminem. Yeah. I mean, you know you do like the uh, Kevin Bacon thing. Yeah. Degree seven, seven, six, six degrees, six degrees. Yeah. 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 I, I told my wife, like, you literally have one person away. I was I was technically one person away that I could call that either was with right. Eminem, battled right. Eminem, or right. probably even, like, did music with Eminem. Right. Which is crazy. Even Dilla, too, when I think about it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Redmatic, Dilla. Like, I, if you think about hip-hop wise, how long we've been along, right. around, it's like, man, like, we were literally steps away from legends. You know what I mean? That's how close-knit it was. My homie moved like... next to Fife before he died. Right. So I was literally, I could have literally... Right. One person away from five. Right. It's just it's the craziest. It's that, it's that niche community. That's, yeah. That's what it is. But anyway, I don't. I want to waste money. You know, no, you know what? People want to go. It. I told it's you. No, I'm not, I refuse to go to those things. I'm never going Mom's to go. Mom, like spaghetti, it. dried and ready. <laughs> Eat confetti. That's wow. just a sample. Uh, what are you gonna hear, everyone? Thirty thousand of you. Uh, uh, no. No. I think those lips already. Mom, I'm just sweaty. <laughs> yeah, that that's one. Yeah. Chris, that I recall. What is his name? Chris Delia. Delia. Chris, that guy does. Chris Dale, yes. <laughs> that guy. That guy. You just have him cut his hair, bleach his hair, go up on stage. Might as well just have a impersonator. Wombs. 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 This is probably the only time I'm ever going to agree with this gentleman. That time okay. I bring up to you oh, right okay. now. A man by the name of Gucci Mane. You've no. heard of Gucci Mane? I heard of Gucci Mane. I don't know what song for him though. I know negative 69 songs of Gucci Mane. Yeah. But I have to agree with him where he came out and he said, no one is listening to Eminem in the car. There is no one listening yeah. to Eminem in the car. He just to change his name from the, to the, from the king of rap. Well, like daily? Like daily, you mean? Like who is really honestly listening, in the, driving around in the car list, listening to the Eminem album? Do that? Know. <laughs> the only time I really bump up. No one listen to his lyrics. Yeah, that's true. I guess so. I mean, I mean, every now and then, like when he first, like yeah. when the bat, the whole uh, when he did the battle rapping thing with the uh, Kelly. I listen to him. Yeah, but I listen to him. I won't like sign in rotation. Okay. My rotation right now really is. Yeah. What do you, you, you say? Is Eric B. Rock Kim Pandora Station? Um, is uh, <laughs> which is dope because it it's it's a really good one. And then uh, what's his name? Quest Loves. Uh, Supreme podcast. Oh yeah. Right. And then uh, Punehali. Hey, all right. Bro, freaking dope album. Shout out Punehali, yes. And uh, that's my rotation right now. Actually. All right, well, three things. And then my and then tribe vibe head beats, bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a good beat. Sorry. Beat battle anyone? <laughs> so that's it. Uh, <laughs> we'll beat tonight, fifty and twenty-five. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. See, you're ready. You're ready. I talked talk to the guys. You're ready. ready. Look at this. It's like clockwork. Media train. Uh, I'm working on my ears. Okay, speaking of media train, I'm going to throw this one out at you because we're, we're, we're right. talking about some kind of Let's local go. thing. Tulsi Gabbard, she's going to, I we I told you, she's going to run for president, bro. Throw her this away, guy. bro. Take time, waste time, Tulsi. She's waste time. Correct. She go, where she went? Saudi Arabia to go buy fake Gucci and go talk story. She went sell them to all the hard Christians in Cairo right now. Yeah, she did that, right? She went to like, <laughs> she went to like Pakistan, right? To be like, yes. to get, I don't know, she went to oil volet or something for a skin. <laughs> and then she come back and everybody's like, what she went over there for? Who knows why she went over there? Like, why you went over there, girl? That she went for president. We, I, I told you. I told you, Swinchy. She has an agenda. No, she, yeah, she has an agenda. She has an agenda because she used to work. I'm going to tell you this. She was to work down her. She used to work at her she dad, down her. Hare Krishna. Yes. He knows the guru. They can, oh. come, they can come talk to me. Let's go. I'll, I'll tell you this. Step to the road. Step like to the road, son. Because I'm going to tell you. She is a snake in the grass. And I don't know. She's going to do something I, I ridiculous. Think, yeah, yeah. She's planning and she's plotting and she's going to, she's maneuvering. You know how like people, like people are going to say we, we don't, we're, we're talking like this because she's a woman. No, it has nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with it, dude. No, it because she... all women. I love women. I am married to a woman. That's the life. <laughs> I was raised yeah, I from a woman. Raised <laughs> from a woman. Shout out to Tupac. Yeah, that's right. Got it, got it. 
For some reason, I thought of like Shaquille O'Neal biological didn't bother. <coughs> oh, wow. It feels my dad. Uh, it feels my biological you know that skills, bother. man. You know what that skills. There you go. Anyway, yes. no, that's who's money, but she has an agenda. She's not gonna be president, cause no. She gotta go to that special. Uh, what is that called? That cap that they have for Illuminati to ride a canoe across the, the right. lake and then they there put the go. fire Shout out and Jimmy look at the all-seeing eye okay. and worship hieroglyphics listen to right. it. You never know. Well, you, that that hurts. Hurts. Who else? Is, she's going to run Democrat, though. There's no one else. Think about it. She's probably going to get Bernie Sanders to be vice president. All like, Bernie Sanders is like 75 years old. Yeah. I yes. should run for president and ask Bernie for people. What's well, like Hillary president Trump. of Omaha and then make Bernie Sanders. Okay. No, no, I'm going to talk to you about Omaha right now. <laughs> I'm going to say something about Omaha because I, I don't get a chance to do this. Because <laughs> okay. I have to run the podcast. Correct. Okay, go ahead. And then the, the Jaylene's Filipino black, so I cannot talk Hawaiian issues. Oh, thanks. Because I told you, I'm the only one that watched the Omaha debate. Yeah, you're the only one. I'll be half a guy that watched Omaha debate. Yes, I was pissed off. Because all these Hawaiians don't know what the hell they're doing. Hawaiians don't know what You don't even know where to go eat, if you remember. Right. Ask them where you want to eat. And she won. The idiot won. She won. Shout out for a caca. At home. Forget it. So I'm just saying, what's what's the end game of this of this uh, whole thing? Because they're getting audited hourly. They're not giving the small local business money. No, nope, nobody giving me money. They're giving it to the lesbian princess. That's, okay. Yeah, she get but she with gets, the crazy dementia. Right, I think she got a picture on IG holding one stack of ones like this. Nah, yeah, I'm not gonna follow her. Okay, thanks. Okay. Oh, good. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. I'm just saying, I'm pissed off at all still. That's all I'm saying. Oh, good. You still be mad. I have to forgive and forget. I back you up, bro. I told you. I'm saying, oh, like I said, I said it, I said it again, bro. I think I would win all. You need to get the loan, is what you need to do. I need the loan, but I'll go into Ohio and get my own loan. Alright. Go the, imagine me going into the bank. So kick them in, Miss Key. What the kind of bitch you want to do? Get the money when I had, bro. Do your thing, you do that, yeah? Well, you better. The time is now, man. Money talks, bro. Time is now. That's right. Time's up. We'll see. Okay. Let's try uh, going to the, the Mount Rushmore for this, this Wow. Season. Okay, let's do this. Let's just go right into that. Right, Morphine, so. Morphine. Morpheus, Morpheus controls Attica Blues. <laughs> Moax. Remix. No one gives a damn about Moax in 2018. Oh, okay. yeah, shout, shout out to Evan, by the way. Shout out to Evan. Shout, 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 shout out to Brother Davy. Shout out to Oliver Twist. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Bros. That's dude. Any underground head and my homies could freaking work Eminem in a rap battle. All right. Okay, okay. Right now, bruh. Okay. Timer okay. come up here and smoke them, bruh. Get them in a the cipher. We're going to discuss that later. Yes. We're going to discuss that later. <laughs> But being this the end of the year, yeah. it's the end of 2018, yeah, 2019 is coming up. We're going to go into the Mount Rushmore of the most pivotal years in hip-hop music. Woo! Okay. So the most years that were the most influential to yourself. Right, 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 right. Um, the thing that changed the, the, the landscape of uh, the, the, the rap music, as they call it. Right. So, do, do you want me to start or you start? Or uh, how should we do that? You want to start? I guess. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So, basically, the years... The Mount Rushmore of years of hip hop. That influenced you. Influenced you. Yeah. Right, right. I, I got, got it. I got it. So I'm going to go chronological from oldest to <laughs> Okay. Oldest. Oldest to newest to make make sense, right? I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you think. Bruh, I just guessed it right now. Guess I'm out, bro. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to go and start with 1993. Oh, nice. Okay, okay, okay. 1993, I remember as, as growing up, Funk Pistol. Oh, wow. Nice. Was big prevalent in 93. 93. Radio Free Hawaii. Yeah. The first ever hip hop show, which won by five votes, I'll never forget this. They they added a ballot. The Radio Free Wire, if you know what, was a ballot. Yeah, station right. that played whatever. You would vote the songs you'd want on there. Yep. And they had they had a, pretty much a survey. Do you want a hip hop show on Radio Free? Right. It won by five votes. It barely won. Wow. And I was like, wow, people just don't like this kind of crap. So they they won, and it became the show was the all looked out. What was it called? The all looked out hip hop show, which made no sense. Who who hosted it? It was. Kathy with a K? It was Kathy with a K. Well, yeah. hey, you gotta get her on it. Kathy with a K was a host. You can get and her on it, get speedy. They played the, yeah, and, and remember the brass music? Oh, yeah, yeah, brass, brass label. That yeah, was a big, big thing. Covered. Acid jazz was big. Yeah, acid jazz. Brass was music was big. So that was my first exposure to hip hop and jazz. And then at that t- t- uh, same time, Freestyle Fellowship's album came out, where he did a lot of jazz influence. And that was a real prevalent thing. Uh, Black Moon. In the fall of 93 came out. Oh, there you go, bruh. So it was a mischief. 93 till infinity came out. I mean, it's 93. Great, 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 yeah. Wu-Tang came out in 93. Yeah, Midnight Marauders. Well, Lula Maestri, which yep. is, I have to say, is my favorite deal album. Yep. I don't know. I mean, a lot of people are going to say no, but I Am I Be is one of the best deal albums. Alcoholics 21 and over. Yes. Alcoholics mm-hmm. is is yep. one of the most slept on West Coast 
Cruise. Totally agree. Ever. Ever. Totally agree. Yeah. They have three great albums, right? Three great albums. 21 yeah. over. Yeah, Liquidation. Uh, Liquidation. Coast to Coast. Uh, Coast to Coast. Coast. The second album was Coast to Coast. Freaking three great albums. Yeah. I mean, two really great ones. Two. Well, the first album was, was just totally. I love that stuff. Every song was great. Freaking. Right? Oh, gosh. I the KT production. KT, shout out to KT, I mean, bro. No, really? And then the fall of 93, if you remember this, the infamous time where you had. Doggy Style came out. Okay. This was like November, November 23rd. Right. The same day as No Need for Alarm. Wow. Dell came out. And then earlier that month was Midnight Marauders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. It, was, it was a time where I just remember like everything was just coming out and you, you felt like, because nobody was into this stuff. So I, I felt like this, this, this kind of just, was the only guy. Because I didn't I mean, in Karate, you probably was the only guy. Right. Oh. Was, I was, this is freshman for me. I was freshman year. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. 90... so, Three. This is 93, and I knew zero people to right. listen to any of this. Right. And I was always question myself, like, how come I'm the only guy listening to this? Right. Without knowing anyone, right? right. Listening to KTUH, right? Listening to uh, Radio Free. So it was just, I, I felt like the most comfortable in my skin, listening, as far as the hip hop music goes, was 93. I was like, wow, where's this gonna go? Right, so there you go, it's 93. And did you buy the uh, Hieroglyphics uh, documentary? No. And if you tell everybody go out there and buy yes. it, it comes in a, a cassette, USB cassette. Yeah. You'll open it. I bought it, 40 bucks. Yeah. It's probably one of the best documentaries about a crew and a song, an album. Yeah. They go over each track on 90. Oh, okay. It's so a very, very thorough. Every music. track. And who produced it. Right. They talk about how they met, right. uh, who they worked with, uh, right. influences. Right. It's, it's, shoot, it's like the greatest, one of the greatest documentaries. Yes, well, definitely. I don't know why Netflix didn't pick it up yet. But um, I have 93 on mine too. Okay, you got 93. Cool. Um, one of the, one of the, kind of like the Fellowship of the East Coast was released in 93, Leaders of a New School Time. Yeah. The Inner Mind's Eye. Were you a fan of that album? I, I like that album. Because, you know, that was the album that led them to break up, right? But, yeah, yeah. But it was still a good album. That's a great album. Spontaneous was an excellent song. <laughs> like, Spontaneous is a five next up. What's next is good. The so, whole album is right. really good. Right. They just let um, they just let what's his name rhyme too much. Uh, the DJ. Dinko D. Uh, not Dinko. No, that, uh, uh, Milo. Come on, Milo. Yeah. He rhymed a little bit. He had the longest verse in uh, What's Next. They gave him too much stuff. He's dope though. I like him. He's yes. dope. Kind of like a Jerome. But time is dope. Spontaneous. I know that's like timer's like favorite song. We were always that that song would always get everybody oh, crazy. Oh, and that, it's weird because KCC rave. It's not a UH high rave. rave. It's no. Just the, it's like doo doo doo. But that is it, that, that's what I what well, we're gonna get to this, the the Hawaii hip hop. That's yeah. that's one of the things. Okay, so you got ninety three. Uh, ninety three. Okay. And then what else you have? Shoot, I was gonna go to nineteen ninety four. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's go. Nas, Biggie, Outkast, Warren G, Gangsta. I'm gonna say ninety four. Yes. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Common, OC, J. Ru, Grave Diggers, all No the, Communication, all the albums, all the movies, Rah, 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 Artifacts, yeah. Rah, I mean, UGK, P-Rock, yeah, P-Rock, yeah, Boogie Monsters, yeah, yeah you that, know was I mean? the, that was the best year, right, I mean, as Fuji's everybody's going to say, album. and the number one album, Boxcar Sessions, boo, oh. <laughs> wow, that was a shocker. Um, yeah. One bad thing of that year, uh, Lords of Underground released their second album, it wasn't that good. That was not good. No. <laughs> Keepers of the Funk. TikTok can get out of here. TikTok was so sad. Garbage. It's kind of like UFC's second album. That was trash. Right? The Illdemonic Click, mm, when they trash. tried to become Wu Tang. Yes. Uno, dos, dos tres, tres, cuatro. No, but it's Oops, good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's how they started the song. That one should give you a sign, it's trash. But Fear Itself was released. Um, Casual? Yeah. Oh, dude, Keith Murray. Yep. Still yet to this day, I think Keith Murray set the trend. For people naming their rap names, their real names. That is true. Because when he came out, you're yeah. like Keith Murray. Right. It was. It caught like, us off. What? Yeah. Is, wait, what's his name? Something? Keith Murray. Right. When the song came on, like, and he, and he was like the East Coast dude, like spectacular, spectacular. Right. You know, spat you with the spatula. Well, because when we, we first saw Keith Murray, was on Yo Theory Raps in Hostel. Yeah. Well, Hostel. The, the Eric Sermon. Dude, I get chicken skin every time. So I like, hear, every time I hear Hostel. So like, because that's what we had back in the day. We had Yo Theory Raps, so we watched these videos. Dude. And, that influenced us growing up, and yeah. that led to all of these. Ooh, I might lose my crew if you got a damn lot. If you got a crew, you better tell them. So that like, was, oh, ah. That's what we grew up. Dude, with. Hostile is like my favorite. It's gotta be my favorite Keith Murray verse. Oh yeah, 
Oh, he just really comes in out of nowhere because right. he's working with EPMD and they're like funk smooth, right? right? Eric Sermon, he got illegal going on. He didn't yeah. get into the roughness. But, he had that but then soul. Keith Murray yeah, just funk. came in. Yeah. Keith Murray. And then the video, when you watch the video, oh, yeah. it's just the visual of yeah. that too. You're walking down awesome. and. They're in like a basement or something. Yeah. Like a, like a, headphones on, everybody's yeah. screaming. But right. dude, Keith Murray, if you don't know people, listen to Hostile. And yeah. like, dude, Keith Murray's verse will like, is almost perfect, dude. See, if we had a sound guy tonight. Yeah. He would play that song right <laughs> Anyway, I can talk about that a little bit. Right. Okay. 94, great year, Beat Nuts, Bush Babies. Yeah. The Beat Nuts, shout out to the Beat Nuts album. Yeah. Yeah. The Street Level. Uh, three Six. Dude, MC Bree, rest in peace. No MC Bree, yeah. Funny. Yeah. Uh, this one was fun to find. This is when he got kind of... That was when we got to get mine with yeah. Tupac. Yeah. So, which is a good, good song. Detroit. Detroit. He had the... Dude. DFC. Yeah. MC Bree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Andrew. Andrew. So. Was that? J-Ru. Oh, J-Ru, yeah. J-Ru, J-Ru right? Second album, yeah? The first album? Well, the first album was 94. Yeah. Oh. Wrath of the Map, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. But yeah, you can't you can contest 94. Yeah, yeah. So. I love it, dude. Oh, I'm yeah. old. I don't, you know what's funny with the whole thing of being old? I don't really give a half already. Hey. Because I, <laughs> I think about it, I'm like, dude, like, we lived freaking to a great, like, a, like, did they say golden era? Like, I don't know how I was in the 80s. I'm not that old. But, like... Well, Dude, we, 90s we, is like we talked cold, about this, dead, like. right? For for what we were into, Bruh. it was the it was a climax of what we were into. And even in Hawaii, kids now don't have ciphers like we had ciphers. The community isn't like the community before, where well, you'd battle literally your friends from other places. Yeah. But like, you could still go to the same clubs. You know what I mean? Like you know. What I mean? well, now I you just, just Skype them. Now you just I don't know, nobody battles. Yeah, you're not gonna battle. That's, that's the problem with music nowadays locally. Is because nobody is. Uh, there's no push and pull. There's no like. There's no friction. Right. It's everybody just stays behind their computer. And when they go out, they just make like, oh hey hey yeah. yeah. I and mean, they talk crap there and they, they come and see each other. Yeah. And I'm like oh, but nah, dude. Back in the day, it was like a cipher would start and then yeah. somebody would start battling like straight right. off the bat. But it was more like iron sharpens iron kind of deal. Yeah, and I was I haven't seen a kid ever. I have to, and yeah. you know it's funny, that was, hey, what, you can rhyme, and I just sit there in the cypher, I don't feel it, dude. like, I really don't, I have no, nothing in my creative anything well, it's wants me to go, I try, and I'm just like, I can't do it, because nobody, yeah, yeah. nobody in the cypher excites me, like, right. you because know, usually you hear your homie, and you see it, and then you see him make a six, you're like, shit, I don't have to six, right. and then you go around, and <laughs> right, you don't, you don't, you don't have that, but there's yeah. nobody like a six, you know what I mean? No. You know what I mean? Or, no, or like when some of your homies catch the vibe and they're just killing it, you know what I mean? Like, it's like... The like, feeling oh, isn't there. Fuck, the I gotta go after that dude, right. man. You just go, right? And you catch it. Sometimes you screw up, you laugh, and you kick it, and then the next person goes on. Right. And, you know what I mean? But doesn't... I mean, I... It has no soul. I think there's kids no still cypher, I think. I mean, I some concerts and then there's a little cypher in the corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes me kind of happy, but like, the, the time when I used to like want to just... Get it's in there, like that, no. and I'm like, rah, it's like, no. you know what I mean? You're because right. the music doesn't, the music that's out now doesn't, uh, 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 what's that called? It has like, no soul. It doesn't uh, uh, breed ciphering, you know what I mean? No, it doesn't. Yeah. Because they don't use samples anymore, it's very robotic, it's, it's like, very, it's one word, hooks, hooks. a lot books, of hooks. Right, the songs are shorter. You don't All need to various things you can say. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and people, and the kids nowadays out there, if you listen to this, the people that say like, yo, check out my boom bap style. This is my trap rap. Like, nah, dude, you either are or you ain't, and just don't step over the line. Like, right. you're gonna make music of what comes out of you, right. and if it's like the trappy whack crap, that's just what you are. Trap, you whack, you know what I mean? But if you, if you like, shout out to Paradigm, the kid is sick, you know what I mean? Kids oh, yeah. eat food, yeah. things are coming out of them. Right. They would think that the raps that are coming out of them, music coming out of them is what's truly them, you know what I mean? So they don't gotta label themselves like, oh, this is my boom bap, you know what I mean? Or like producers nowadays, they put on top of their labels. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, soldier, a soldier boy beat. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is my yeah. Swiss beats my sounding beat. Yeah. This is my Jake One sounding beat. It's like nah, you make beats, and this is what you make. You know what I mean? It's what comes out of you. Yeah. See, don't you miss the man? But I just tell you this. That's basically yeah. what you would do every week. That's not <laughs> true. Anyway, next. Okay, okay, next oh, picture. Tired. All right. Freaking so we're yeah, freaking out. Right, right, right. yeah, okay, let's go. Put it in the same way. Okay, shout okay, out. So, so 93, 94, you agree? No, oh, yeah, of okay. course 94. Next, agree. let's go. Okay, but in my restaurant, I did not put 94. Wow. I did not. Wow. wow. This is Look why. The crowd is booing. Oh, let me, let me step to the row once again. No, no, the row is This is why. This is why. Restaurant row, close. As far as influence, influence <laughs> it, it does close, it sucks though. 
That's kind of we're just talking about that. You used to go to those clubs over there? No. <laughs> okay. So reason why I did not put that wow. is because ninety three. <laughs> yeah, but it's I did okay. I'm just gonna say okay, this right say now. The year is nineteen ninety five that I put next because ninety three led to the perfect year that was ninety four. Okay, which you could see coming if you were in into 93. it ninety three. Because yeah, yeah. in the fall of ninety three, you have all these these great albums coming out. Right? All these bangers yeah. coming out in the fall, not November. Right. So you know that 94 is on its way, right. and it took off, which it did. Right. 95 was the one where I felt... Okay, so that's your next one. 1995 is where it, nothing can get any better than this. this wow, is nothing can get any because better. Because we got so many different groups. Everything is in full swing. 94 is coming in strong. Okay. Then you have all of the different mediums that we could find out about, because UMT reps ended at this point. Oh, right? They, okay. went, they went off the year 95. So like, what are we going to do to figure out what we like? Right. We don't know. But then you had all the influx of the Flavor magazine, rap sheet, rap pages, right? Well, I got all Source. that. Source. I, yeah, I, I, right? I still have all those. You had the box, the video oh, music box. Video. <laughs> request, you just request, sir, mix a lot of on the glass. I That's all you requested. I, I think That's it's all you're doing. I think it's the East like many times on that thing. Right. <laughs> or Bone Thugs and uh, Bone. Oh. Lesson Crips. I wish you were here. Yeah. Lesson Crips. Lesson Crips. <laughs> that was on every moment. Oh, somehow Gangsters got someone's credit card, yeah. but it just threw that pit 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 pit. What do you do? Okay, so for people that don't know, what was the other one? This was dedicated to my Gangsta League. DRS. Dude, they play that all the time in the box. I watched the box, like, huh, Gangsta League. They play Black Moon, they play KRS a lot. So for people that don't know, it was a channel, 24 hour music channel that would only play videos if you requested them. You had to pay for it. You'd have to call a 900 number, and it was two bucks a video. And you would dial in, they'd have the different videos, the numbers, the three digit number. Yeah. You have to just write the digit number if you're yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you call them up, da 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 da, they play the video. Crazy, man. So then we always see funny. The box. I wish you were here. They played Wascals. They played Wascals, uh, Class Clown, yeah, and Class Clown. There. But then you always want to get like the most obscure thing and just put it like ACL on mic check. Put it on there. <laughs> Nobody even care. And then yeah. back to put them on the glass. And then back to DRS. <laughs> It was always the same. <laughs> this it was always the same. Like, who are these people? Like, don't you want to meet those guys? Like, who is constantly the Did you ever try? You ever try? What, to meet these guys? No, no, to, uh, to put it in. Oh, yeah, of course. I, I ran up the phone bill. Oh, yeah. yeah, my mom pissed off. Did it work, though? Yeah, oh. it, it did work. Oh, wow. And then, what is this bill for? What are, what are you calling? I don't know. It was like 20 bucks. <laughs> Choice is yours, choice is yours, black sheep, choice is yours. Put them on the glass. Put, oh, you were to put them on the glass. And it said put them on the glass on the bill. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you can eat your mom, right? Yeah. So, we, you're more so should piss off. You have a job now? What is all this? How can I get the black guy in his fire? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you can see the chichis, huh? Exactly. <laughs> because it was unedited, right? It was unedited. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Late night, it was unedited. They would show an edited video. So wow. if you watch YouTube, so mix a lot, put them on the glass, you'll, you'll thank me later. Damn. Okay, 95 was all of this stuff, right? Then you had Smith and Wesson album. Oh, bruh. The Roots? I can listen to Smith and Wesson album like now. Well, the Roots came out in 93, but yeah, the, the, the first Roots, but then the second Roots. Uh, and you, you, yeah. uh, Which one? Wait, wait, wait. Talk about the first one. Little for Life was 95. No, okay. no I'm sorry. Because their first album was. Uh, Do you want more? Organic. organic. No, Organic. Organic, yes, okay. That came more. out. That's the independent one. Yeah. That was 93. Yeah. Right. Then you go, do you want more? Then you go, Illadelph. And then you had Bob D. Okay, do you want, do you want more or Illadelph? Which one's better? Do you want more was more unique? Yeah. Because nothing came out like that. Before. Yeah, that's true. There was a band. Never, there was never a band. You yeah. tell people a hip hop band, they laugh at you. Yeah. So that was, that was unique. But the infamous Bob D. Oh, yeah. The, the, the game changing album came out. Old Dirty Bastard came out. The Nance. Uh, Black Delicious Full Length. Raekwon in the summer. Soul 69 was on K2H, Go Running Hard. Bruh, shout out to Taro. You know he's a Mr. Buddha. E. Mr. E is a monk, Buddha monk. Yeah, you told me that, yeah. In New York. Wow, Buddha monk. And he's like uh, uh, one of those head dudes. Like, he's like up there. Yeah. Like, he can float and stuff. No, no, <laughs> no he, like, literally, he, literally, he's one of the main, like, in New York. Yeah, yeah. He knows Joe, of course he knows Joe, of course. He can but, float like Joe. No, no, like, literally, he's like a, a big time, like, head seafood monk. Okay. And he comes out for the lamp, uh, lamp lighting ceremony, oh. and he does the whole. Well, he, he came to the shop to meet size. I see oh. he came to the shop. I was like, dude, wow. the sonar, but he's like a, just a regular hip hop head right. when he's not in the, you know. Right. That was every Thursday night, Soul 69. Right. It wasn't for Soul 69, it wouldn't be no light sleeper show. 
Yeah, I, I have to say it because that, that set the tone that for Thursday yeah. And then, and then uh, the news will talk about Valentino's. Got a show for Valentino's. Yeah, Big DJ D, Excel, we're going to have a show after that. Yes, Big the D was there. Yeah. The Prude, the Prude, yes. Out, all, all those guys made, and there wouldn't be no seat times over. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's it, cool. we all here. Yeah, all ready. I'll never forget the Soul 69 I listened to where they announced that Pete Rock and Seal Smooth broke up. And I was like, what? But they announced it? Yeah. They announced it on the show. I'm like, how did they know what? And we wow. have internet, right? We never, I'm going to know this. And then they, they end up playing like being ingredient songs. I'm like, oh, I got sad. Those are like sad. Wow. So, you I'm know, like, I listened to an interview about those guys, and there's like, there's static between them. Like, still, yeah, it's still, yeah, still yeah. smooth. They're it's kind of sad, dude. Ego. There's no reason. Ego and proud has so, Okay. 95, Lab Cabin California came out. Liquid Swords came out. Lab Cabin, I kind of slept on. We all, really? I slept on, but like, I didn't give it as much. Because, bro, when. Um, the Zara Ryan came out. It was so next level of mind blowing. Oh yeah. yeah. That when Lab Cabin came out, it was Dilla, right? Yeah. yeah. And Dilla came with just like the typical, not typical, but you know, it was more like, uh, boom, boom, you know. Right. But then, but then. Uh, it totally changed the sound for Lab Cabin. Yeah, because it was more organic, right? Yeah. It was more like good lifestyle. Yeah. With like live instruments, like right. who is the name? You know, all that kind of crazy zaniness. Then they toned it down. Yeah. And it took me a while to get used to, to that second far side. Mm. So when I first heard it, I was like, you know, you drop and all right. that stuff like she says. And, right. And then the more I listened to it, it took me, no, you're, took I can me see a while. What you're saying. It took me a while. Because that production, we were accustomed to that. Yeah, because you're talking about Far Side, yeah. these guys just think, Yamama was the first single. Yeah. Dude, Yamama. Like, it was a comedy group, pretty much, for right. the most part. And then they did Passing Me By, but then yeah. that whole sound changed. Other Fish. Changed. Yeah. yeah. Other Fish by Michael. So when they went from that, you know what I mean? Jay Smooth, Jay Swift, right. Right. and then they bounced into Dilla. Right. It was just like, what the heck? Right. So yeah, that, that's a big point. Uh, one more thing I want to throw out. Group Home. Oh, Group Home cool. came out in 95. Bruh. <laughs> I can listen to Group Home. I mean, come on. <laughs> really? Group Home. That's it? I listen Every to song is there. To, everything we talked about, I listened to like, probably the other night. Wow. Well, well. Yeah. Good. The Group Home. What's your favorite track off of Group Home? Oh, God. Living Proof or? Superstar. Are we comparing between the two or just favorite overall? What was the, what was the, third, the third single? Oh, yes. Up against the wall. Uh, up against the wall. They had a remix of Up Against the Wall. Uh, and then the realness. You have uh, uh, the other one. Uh, the one they're in after in the they, city. After they finished watching uh, Superstar, they're in the boys' home, and then they're talking like, "Yo, that's what is it? That's living proof. That's living proof." Yeah, the video. You're talking about oh, the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Superstar, Superstar was Superstar. the first Superstar. single. Living proof came out. Yeah. And every song in that album is a bang. Okay. I mean, who cares if they can't rhyme for saving their life? Yeah, they look that bad. That, they that, couldn't that, rhyme. That, uh, that was primo beats. That's you put that and on. You got it. Two dudes that like. I got thirty six grams on the scale right now. Hey, I mean, hey, little that was hard though. His yeah, rhyme was, was hard, hard, and his voice was like. They had good voices. <laughs> they could just be but bumbling he, any kind, but, he, but it, it was, worked. It's an ongoing uh, joke, even in that industry, about uh, Malachi and Nutcracker. Because even when you, when uh, primo gets interviewed yeah. about him, he kind of snickers like, like yeah, man, you well, just see. Like, and, but he, it was like a, it was like a pro. He was like maybe one of the first. Like he should have been in Dipset. Yeah. It'll yeah. Work. It'll work. Yeah. Damn. Well, he, I mean, people always had like guys who were like not the greatest. Right. From Snatch Up. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, he had MLP. He was helping MLP out. Nice, good, man. but there was a lot of guys that just <laughs> whatever. Big Shug. Big Shug, right? Yeah, we Which got, still has one of the dopest verses on Bob Deep. On Bob Deep, which yeah, one? Was he on top? Give up the goods? No, was that him? No, that was a uh, you know the poops. No, that wasn't. That was big noise, right? Big noise, my bad. Wrong big. Yeah, Sorry, big, big noise. Big noise. That's All the big noise. And by the way, that's my favorite Bob track. Give it the goods. Give it the goods. Good yeah. That beat is freaking fire. That's fire. Right? Yeah. Ooh, when I heard that beat, I was like, ah. Oh, that's it. Oh, just I'm gonna swear already. Yeah. Okay. What I what, <laughs> what you got there? Okay, okay, so we got 90, 93, Agree, ninety four. Me, ninety five. But I agree, ninety four. I agree. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna take you back, way back to 1991. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, why 91? 91 because, dude, I had to look this up because in my gut, my first one was like 90. I just wanted to start with 91. Okay. So, boom, you got uh, De La Soul's Dead, Death Certificate, Breaking Adams, Niggas for Life, Cypress's first album. Yes. Groundbreaking. Yes. Tupac Clips Now, I my know. favorite Tupac Clips. That's album. Tupac's best album. Open Chief Clothing, uh, Ghetto Boy's first album, Quick is the Name. Yeah. We spoke with the Georges here. Uh, first leaders of the musical. Yes. Ah, and the first candy, Mr. Hood. Oh. That's right. But and then someone told me the other day <coughs> that candy was the first to use sped up samples, 
to some extent. Oh. Well, someone was telling me this. Like, they're the first to use something. Like, you know how Kanye got famous for it? Right. To listen to Candy because they're the first. Well, it makes sense. All their songs like over 100 BPM. <laughs> Dude, it's hard to mix, right? That was the thing with, yeah, <coughs> 90 songs. Yeah. They, want to be, they want to be house, kind right, of. Right, right, right. Jungle Brothers. But yeah, Candy. Uh, that's what they concern. UMC's first album. NOG's first album. Yeah. Uh, organized first album. Dude, you can go on Tim Dog's first album. Mm. You got to put that in there? Dude, look at this one. When I Google the hip-hop albums released in 91, yeah. guess what pops up? Jodeci, Forever My Lady. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is a good album. Yeah. Great <laughs> album. I can play that right now. All the way. Yeah, right. You have to play that? Oh. Jodeci, that, that album? Cover? No. I don't have that one. Dude. They never, I don't think they made one for that. They that was promo only. Yeah. I need that. Oh, cool. There's some nerd talk right now. That's yeah. mad nerd talk. Yeah. Uh, Naughty by Nature, for example. See, I, I think you chose that because you're, you're a little bit older than me. I think that's what it is. Because it comes down to like what, when you, what you were growing up as. Well, I just in my head. Like, I remember ninety one, but I just remembered fast stuff, and I was just like, it was, it was okay. Like, like Black Sheep had an album, right? Didn't Black Sheep come yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, Sheep's Boy. It's like that album I liked a lot because it was different was, from like all the fast songs. Yeah, that's all, that song, that album was like you know, De La Soul's dad was making fast songs. Yeah, Younger yeah, Brothers yeah, making fast yeah, songs. Yeah, that's true. KMD. You know, I think everything was coming out of like the eighties uh, and the house, more housey era. It was the hip house thing, right? Like. Um, because then D-Light was big, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. then they put Q-Tip on there to yeah. just add to the whole mess. So Right, right. Two Kings and a Cypher was super, oh, it was like 1990. That was fast stuff. That was right? super fast. Yeah. That's why I just, 91 was like mad hip hop nerd talk, dude. Like, you know, keep it moving already. So anyway, yeah. 91 was good, let's go. All right. Let's get that. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so this is the one that is going to talk about Hawaii hip hop in that era. Okay. And it's going to talk about the gentleman that's going to be coming on later. I, I went with 1998. Oh. Okay, I went with 98. 98. Because that's kind of where I felt that, that hip hop had to reinvent itself. Because if you looked at '96 and '97, what happened there was Bad Boy. Yeah. Oh. A lot of hip hop R&B singers, like hip hop guy with the, the singer chorus. It got really commercial, really yeah. big. So then all the underground hip hop that was in '95 was like, oh, what happened to all you guys? Yeah. And then you'd have Tribe would try and match that with Beats, Rhymes, and Life, which was right. not very good. Right. But they would have Faith Evans on the chorus, which you yeah. would never fathom having them have Faith Evans, right? You'd have the De La Soul album, they tried to up, update their sound. Right. You you had a lot of guys that were like, they were trying to hang on. And what else? Illadelphia Life came out in that time, too. Illadelphia Life sounded, that was the most hip hop sounding, boom bap sounding album of all the, of the, the then do you want more? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? They, they went away from the organic style. Yeah, it's more production on that one. They went more production on that one. Mob Deep came out. Right. And then they had Hell on Earth, which was like the beginning of the end of Mob Deep as far as like. Oh, yeah. That sound, okay, it sounded kind of, it's good, but you know. Okay. Well, yeah, they hooked up with uh, G Unit. That was later on. That was later on, yeah. That was when they were just holding on, yeah. But so 96, I just looked at as a way that led to 97, which we didn't have much. We didn't know where this was going to go. We had Company you, Flow and Dr. Octagon. That's you, all we had. You know what? In those eras in the late 90s, you know what was happening? Is we were moving from being fans to making music. Because I, I started my show in 97. You started your show in 97. And that's when we all got four track recorders. We all started making beats. I started DJing in 97. So we started going from consumer to producers. Right. Because that's when I started meeting like fame. I started right. meeting like, uh, I met like the Kanye guys. And I started met like people. the Ava Beach guys. And right. Everybody was making like beats right. on their own, right. rhyming on their own, recording on tapes. That's exactly right. So 90, to the, the, the late 90s was we, we Puff Daddy. But I think... We started doing you know, making. That was huge. And then you'd have all that. You'd have the underground, which was became Rockus Records. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd have the Fondalum Records, yeah, Stone yeah, Stroll, yeah, yeah. ABB Records. Right. And then that's where you would lead to the new era of how we reinvented ourselves, where we would go out and meet people. Right. Borders, Y. Kelly, where we would go get records. <laughs> yeah. That was the only record store, really, that had yeah, good yeah. vinyl. Two Rules was around, though? Not yet. Not yet. 98? 99? It was coming in 99. 99. Todd. Todd. Todd was the one. Yeah. Shout out to one. Because when did uh, Funk Pistol? Funk Pistol was done like 96 like or 97. Like it was fast already. Yeah, so we had nothing except Jelly. Yeah, Star Records, Star Records. Star Records, Small Kind, and then you had Hungry Air. And then that was it. The Beat? Beat was only some club stuff, though. They would not sell yeah. any stuff. Yeah. So well, then we would find out. Cuts? Wahio Wahio. Wahio was still there, that's right. Wahio was there. Yeah, Wahio was there. Yeah. So you cast the bus, go on Wednesday. Wendy's after. Yeah, the only place with Wendy's. Only place with Wendy's. 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 That's a good Remember that? I probably what a used combo. To, yeah. to travel to Wahio and see Wendy's. Yeah, I did. How sad that was. Not the most. <laughs> let's, let's talk about something else. Uh, yes, it was sad. Hey, get gas money, bro. Go Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, we got cars there. Yeah, so, yeah. I was driving by 98, so yeah. 
Sorry. But th that was the thing where 98, where we, where I, we kind of came out of our shells yeah, yeah. because we were like the guys that we thought we were the only guys that listened to hip hop. Right. Then we finally met other people. Yeah, yeah. That's when I first met a person like Jamal, for example. Oh, yeah. That's when I first met a person like Dell, for yeah. example. And it's all kind of led to the next DMFD. So a lot of regrets then. <laughs> nah! This will be the only time I mention those three. <laughs> but but that's, that's kind of how it, it, it evolved to no, like no, how no. Hawaii uh, hip hop became this thing where you'd have Invisible Ink. Hawaii hip hop, yeah, have, it became an emergence in the late 90s. Right, you'd and, have the Capital Fat, you'd have the Hidden Habitats. Yeah, yeah. I, right? I want to say, I don't want to say, ah, uh, Pussycat I'll, Lounge. Yeah. Source. No, source. source. Yeah. We're in a source. Source, which is now the oh, yeah, Japanese the source. Yeah. There you go, yeah. Reading the source, which is the only thing left that we had. And then we had the source nightclub. Yeah, oh yeah. Which was now which is now Japanese market, Puck Salad. Yeah, yeah, right? go over there, get the every big sausage. Get the yeah. See <laughs> <laughs> so everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's not that bugger. A lot of cryptic uh, references. People laugh because they know. You know well, like, but you, I think it's so cryptic. It's, you eat the kimchi, you know, the cheap kimchi bowls. <laughs> yeah. You show egg and that inside, right? I feel like a king. Oh, that's all you wrote. That's all you. Too salty. Thank you. Thank you. Too salty. Yes. But cookies, they, anybody? Cookies over there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so the great album, Gangstar, Moment of Truth. Yeah. Right, came out. Um, Black Eyed Peas first album. Remember those guys? Yeah. yeah. I do remember. Yeah. Hey, the new hey, album. No, no, this is actually, yeah, I gotta, I gotta don't say, I, I listen to that again, it's pretty, it's good, they're back, they got, they got the Holly singer out of there, they got them out, yeah, yeah. sent them out, but that's a good album, yes, they're bringing another one, they're bringing Nicole in, from Pussycat, Nicole Stranger, oh, no, no, okay, <laughs> well, yeah, she's not a girl. She's not a girl. She's a local girl. She's a local girl. She's a local girl. Yeah, she's a local girl. Yeah, yeah, bro. Okay, get chance then. Get chance. Get chance. Get chance. Let's just throw Max all the way out of the crew right now. Don't worry. Everything, bro. <laughs> the guard, which is a bodyguard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was ninety-eight, as far as That's things. That's the best changing. error, yeah. Best <laughs> 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 error. Put a boot. Wow. Wow. We, we need a sound effect for that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. What else you got? Let's go. Dude, dude that's. Uh, I don't know. I'm stoked that. Uh, maybe just. Uh, ninety-two. You talking about ninety-two? That's old. That's old. I think I'm good already. Yeah. I agree with you. Wait. You so you got your four, that's it. Yeah, that's All it, right. that big. Yeah. Alright. Okay. So we got 91, 93, 94, 95, and 1990. 98. 98. Wait, okay. And then I got one, well, like, 93, 95, and then 98, and then I have my last one. So we go 2002. Oh, you're in 2002 now? 2002 is my last one. Wow. Okay, what came out of 2002? Everything. Independent <laughs> records. Everybody had a 12-inch had a uh, record. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. had vinyl. Everybody had a song. Every, independent. Like yeah, every, everything. No, no, you're right. Doom released a lot of stuff in 2002. You had Doom, you had Atmosphere, RJD2, uh, yeah. J-Live, Cage, every single freaking guy. But that's what I mean, like, because in the early, the late 90s, everybody was making music, right? Right. That's what I feel like we kind of missed out, is we didn't keep going hard in music. Because everybody that was in our sphere of making music, yeah. like like you're saying, like the Cages, we were there. Like, I, I, when I look back on it now, we were right there. Like, we Hawaii, as in hip-hop-wise, with... Light sleepers, hidden habitat, who wanna like all of us guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. We were all just we're all in the same like breath as like the Anacons and the Death Chucks before. Because they were all coming up. But too. we nobody really took it and notched it, you know what I mean? Right, to the next thing. You know right? To the next stage. But there were literally so many groups, right? Yeah. Like we could just go back and forth and just think of if you can just think of like spontaneously groups of arsonists. Yeah. Strange yeah. Fruit Project. Oh yeah. Oh, people nice. under the stairs. Oh, put, they retired. Yes. Uh, what's his name? Retired. Uh, put people under the stairs. The producer. Oh yeah. Double K. No, double, double K. Uh, yeah, uh, no. That's one. Oh. He okay. put out on Instagram. He retired from hip hop. See the local figure. See two thousand two. Right? He said he did 10, 10 albums. He did over twenty years. See. He said he's tired. Foreign Legion. Ugly Duckling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We could just keep going. I mean, like, there's a there's a million groups. It was. It was so saturated. You could go add records, dial in people, you know Rascal, what? Planet Asia. And that era was the easiest to mix. Because you know, and that was why. Because they all sounded kind of the same. 
and DJ, I remember that era was like the best era for instrumentals to freestyle. Yeah. And the best era to mix from record to record. Right. Because everything was in between like 88, well, 90. 88 and 95. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. And it did so many unspoken heard. Dude, that was, you were the rep, right? I was the rep for that. <laughs> so that, that was how I came on your show. Is she, that, is she run Blue Black? Yeah, Unspoken Heard, Seven Heads Entertainment. Seven Heads. Seven, yes. yeah. And they also represented J-Live. J-Live, Fat John, like all those guys. So that, that's a little, that, I never mentioned that on the show. Yeah, uh, I used to be the rep for J-Live and Unspoken Heard. Yeah, yeah. And I always get the records. And then I'll bring them on your show and I'll play the song. Play them. Yeah. Got them. Yeah. 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 Fantastic so, Damage. Shoot. What else is, what else is on there? Non-fiction. Uh, uh, so before we take a break here. Throw a non-fiction. Uh, uh, little Brother. Oh yeah, Little, little Brother. Seven L and Esoteric. Dude, Eden. Eden's first one. From Eden. The class. Necro. Remember Sing uh, Shit Face? I used to play it all the time. We used yeah. to play it too. Yeah. The Controls. The, control, uh, the Controls came out then? Atmosphere. Oh, uh, the album. That's true. You know what's funny is? They were uh, under. I was, in, um, I was uh, in San Francisco in 2003, this is was? 2002? Yeah. Three. Yeah. And I was digging for that. And I went um, I went to the bottom of Hate Street, Market and Hate. Yeah. There's a house record store there. Right, and I was like, ah, somebody told me like, yeah, I had to check it out, right? Right. This house was still was big. Yeah. So I was like, ah, what am I gonna find in a house record store? Okay, all house music. Walk in there, hip hop guys. I was like, records, dude, just plasters. Like, and I just was like, dude, just let's just go in there. And I just started digging, dude, find controls, doubles. Yeah, they had they had a lot of the whole ass. Because it was a smile. Like, down tempo. Remember? Right. Lock it, right? Yeah, smile. So I was just like, dude, I bugged out so hard in that in that uh in that house record store, right. like everybody was like, what the fuck. I was like, oh shit, controls, the controls. There's no swearing you've ever done on the show. It's pretty good. Well, because I'm not saying the show, so I figured yeah. out. Yeah. Is that again you mentioned? There you go. Anyway, that's not All my right. story and how I got the controls line. Okay, one, one final thing. Props, we, 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 we went way over time. we got to get, get out of here. But yeah, let's get over. I was going to mention final okay. thing, 98, Down Temple Music. That's it. Down Temple was all into the Down Temple scene. Mo, Mo, Wax, Mo Wax, DJ Vadim, uh, DJ Crush, Ninja Tunes. Ninja Tunes. And a lot of that I think is was because we were fed up with hip hop in 96 and 97. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We kind of moved on to other kind of stuff. Yeah. Attica Blues. Yeah, oh yeah. Portishead. Portishead. Yeah. We're big into Portishead, right? Oh, and we were all into that. And why would we be oh, into that? Right? Because it was like the next step of hip That's why Anaconda came big. Because it was, it was that the next genre. step of hip hop. Because we're tired of like hearing everything sound like because Rascal. Because Bad Boy took over. And Defara. I mean, we love, I love Defara, Rascal, and all those guys, but you, everybody sounded like that. Right. Like, you know, like, so I just like, wanted to just mention that, that that was a big, that was a big thing yeah, for it was all of us. We all tried to, yeah. Oliver got the hugest freaking collection. Right. That was, that was a big influence for all of us. Yeah. All right, let's take a break then. Let's go. We Sleep got... time's over. Captain the Catalyst, DJ Zach Morris, uh, Christmas special, long-winded. Yeah. Special. <laughs> Woo! Sleep time's over, Kevin the Catalyst, DJ Zach Morris, the return. Welcome. Yeah, hey, thanks. Welcome back. Uh, Christmas special. Yes. Do you still do episode numbers at all? Well, like I've always told you, <laughs> What's that? why, but uh, I never quite figured out. So I, I, I'm and still trying to figure out. There's a lot of transition I gotta figure out. True okay? that, true that. I got these young divorce. That's like divorce. No, it is more complicated. Kids, kids, kids. Well, it's not giving or taking, but it's just kind of like reconfiguring. Sign the prenup, yeah. Paperwork. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of paperwork. Okay. I'm working on papers. Working on papers. Well, I got a, look, some news and notes here for oh, January. Shit. Just quick. Bro, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on. Give me one second. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. Our time. January will be back. January eighth. For the uh, the award show. Feel free to join. Oh, okay. We're gonna have uh, Rob DeMello. Oh. Rob okay, show Rob. We'll do the award show. Then therefore, after that, January 15 will be DJ Jimmy Taco. Oh, man, and, you got some uh, guests at Joe Beth. Brian uh, from Scratch. Yeah, yeah. Or he's going to be there. Nice. Then also after that, we'll have Mr. Uh, Creed Chameleon. Hey! Creed Chameleon. You know, he's, he's back from the dead, wherever yeah, yeah. he came from. Yeah. He'll be back. And then February, we're going to have Mr. Uh, the Holly Ball Holly. Splash will be on. Can we get a flash wow. on the show? The, mo the, the most Holly guest we've ever had. Hey, but I got only the respect for that cat. He Flash Hanson, original me, Pussycat Lounge, man. Yeah, he put me on. He put me on, dude. Like yes, yes, so he'll be on. And uh, that's uh, the coming uh, coming weeks. So let's let's ah. it. Tonight, bruh. Get ready. Tonight. Slow <laughs> clap for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, I clap. <laughs> <laughs> great job, bruh. I'm proud of you, man. All right. I'm proud of you. 
I'm so proud of you. I, 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 I don't <laughs> know what to say. Those say. guests are banging you, for real. Uh, I'm, really just, cool. I'm, I'm trying, man. Right. I'm trying to do something with my life. Yeah. Okay. All right. But our next guest, that, that's, you already gave him an intro already. So let's, you know, we're running way over time. Let's just bring out brother right now. I'm going to play it. Let's go. Here we go. You get intro music. Oh, as you know. Oh, wait. He's got, this song's got a long intro. I got it. Like, and introducing. Introducing Andrew Watts. There we go. Eric Watson. AC Alone? It's the first time you met him. No, I think it was before AC Alone show, where it would just freestyle. be the weekly. Just freestyle. You would just be, oh, yeah. Oh, Captain. Okay. Yeah, and Omega 6 would, would just be freestyling. And then you, did you guys open? For AC Alone. AC Alone, yeah. That was my first encounter oh. with this genre. That was our first show ever. With <laughs> really? DJ Bumblebee. He rhymed in that. That's right. That's right. And uh, K, okay, all right? No, it's just me. Okay, well, why on that one? Me 6 and uh, oh. Bumblebee. Did you guys do Bully Pot in that one? No? Yep, Bully okay. Pot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out Bumblebee. Shout out Bumblebee. Yeah, he dude. was in Seattle for a minute, I think. Went back for vacation, I think. Is he back on that? Yeah. He came to my shop the other day. Really? Chopped it up. Yeah. He's out of the house in his ambulance. Yeah, he's, he's an EMT, right? Studying yes, to be a paramedic. Yeah, it's crazy. Really? Yeah. He that's told me some crazy stories. But shout out to Bumblebee. I can imagine. But he was, he was an influence for myself. Oh, big time. I, I, I love listening one to him. One, one of my top five mixers, Brian Hoy. Oh, yeah, too, clearly. Man. Clearly, yes. He's, he's probably one of my biggest inspirations. For uh, like selections and DJs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. It was just so different from the norm, that was great. Yeah, he introduced me to like Ninja Tune and Mox and yep. all the acid jazz stuff. Right. Yep. Jazz Fudge. Jazz Fudge. Oh, gosh. I went with him to Funk Pistol and he bought the actual first Black Pistol album from Funk Pistol. Whoa, you know, damn. And I didn't know what it was. He, we went back to his house, put it on. You like to Blown away, like what the fuck? That was something. That was the something. first one, right? Which first was, uh, Lyric Fathom and all that. Yeah, Swan yeah. Lake. Swan Lake, yeah. Swan Lake, yeah. Yep. 40 Ounce. Like, yeah, 40 Ounce. Which was one of, like, the main yeah. instrumentals with freestyle. Oh, yeah. yeah. The beat is freaking. That's a Shadow, right? 40 Ounce was Shadow, I think. Shadow, right? Yeah. I think it was Shadow. But yeah, Shadow. So we, we gotta get this that guy to show up. Bumblebee, he'll come out. He works, man. He just works a lot, right? Yeah, dude. Well, to everybody listening, that that guy, I don't even know what to say. The great mixer. Yeah. Great, Tough, great MC, leader. sick MC, sick producer. Yeah. He was yeah. One uh, of sick favorite. dancer. He was such a sick yeah. MC, man. Dude, he could do everything. That was it. Guys, dude. And he killed it in Seattle. Oh, like, yeah. When Crush would go to Seattle, DJ yeah. Crush, he would recommend. He would get be the fucking open for him. Dude. Nice. When did you first? Was it, was I it took Aaron time? home. I took Aaron home one time. I don't know if yeah. you remember this. Was that one of the? I think I remember. Someone said you needed a ride from Waikiki, and I took you home to yeah. to uh, buy. I bought you a chili bowl. No. I remember you were at a military. You buy you a chili bowl. You're staying at a military housing. House. Oh, that's right. And yeah. someone's like, anybody oh, wow. going that way? And that's when I moved to Waipahu. So I was like, yeah, I oh. just met you. Huh. 94 block. 94 block. Yeah, so then I dropped you off somewhere by the airport. Yeah, yeah it's that neighborhood yeah. right off of Nimitz. Yeah. Well, where yeah. was that from? Where you we were, from what event or what? We were at a club somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I kicked out of the house and I lived with my mom. Yeah, there you go. That's the first time I met him. And after that, it was just pretty much my introduction to the Kanye cat. Which is funny because Philly was living in Kanye with my brother. Oh, crazy. But you were staying there. Yeah. You kicked out. hated me. You kicked me out. But look at you now. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Kaniohe guys. I gotta say, the whole crew. That was the whole crew. Right? I mean, even um, before us, though. I mean, you know, there was Malosi and right. Jamal, and yeah. you know, all those guys. I grew up with Jamal actually. 
bro. Crazy. He was like the Kahalu, yeah. He he was oh, a BMX right. dude. Nice. He was the only dude I saw on a BMX on that half pipe. The same half pipe as Christian Osoy. Wow. Is he same age as the Christian Osoy? We gotta assume so at this I point. I don't know, dude. Or younger. I don't know how old he is. Late 40s. You, you don't even know how old Jamal is. <laughs> no, dude. That dude's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so crazy. brother doesn't age. Van okay. Helsing. It's like Van Helsing. Gonna, that's gonna be the cover for this for this episode. Just a picture of the ball. He doesn't age. He's gotta be like uh, part like Tahitian, freaking Norwegian, Scandinavian, Brazilian, Brazilian, and a little bit Filipino. Okay. Gotta be Asian because Asians always look. Young. Anything that ends with AN, we just put them in there. Yeah. Asian, Asian, Micronesian, oh. <laughs> Laotian, Laotian. Brazilian. Was it nice game? <coughs> yes. Anyway, Jamal. <laughs> this is the Jamal show. <laughs> this is the Jamal show. He grew up with Jamal, but yeah. that wasn't your main crew though, right? Oh, no, no. The main crew was who? It was AN at first. Yeah. AN before uh, D4N? Oh, D4N. Wow, D4N. Was it like the same time? Oh, but D4N was, was before. before. Graffiti, right? Yeah, I moved, I moved back home from Las Vegas after living in California for six and a half. Right, right. So that I spent my whole adolescence in Cali. I left when I was in, was in sixth grade, and then I came back in the middle of my junior year in high school. Damn. So it was culture shock for me. You know? wow. It's kind of everyone. Crazy. Want, everybody. Want, I mean, it's castle, bro. It's fucking <sighs> country, so right. yeah. everyone wanted to beat me and my brother. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Everybody. laughs> you guys were like banging, banging. Yeah, because like, we look like Cali kids. You yeah. know, uh, we were such tiger kids. Cali kids, like, long kids. belt, the long belt. Long belt, Dickies, <laughs> fucking polo, like we look straight. Yeah, the, the, well, we had that, that Latino stage, man. We were so. Did you guys have the long bangs or no? I did have bangs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can picture a band, yeah. You yeah, had long band. bangs. You were dial. You were dial. Cross eyed. No one fucked with us, though, because the Duma Dad blood was huge and fucking on the inside. Oh, so crazy. Everyone that wanted to touch us couldn't because my fucking cousins would smash them. They were untouchable. So how did you link up with like all the all the kind of guys to create oh, and stuff? Oh, so it was D four A. I remember going to Castle and there was fucking ugly ass graffiti everywhere. Right. So whack. It was super whack. And I remember Todd came up to me. Shout out to Todd. T. Circle of Fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, he came up to me. He's like, "Hey, come kick it with us," you know, because I was by myself. Right. You know, like, and they were like the skater hip hop kids. Right. So I was like, "All right, I'll come kick it with them." So Todd asked me about. If I knew about b boy, right? I was like, yeah, you know, in uh, Las Vegas, I used to kick it with b boys and watch b boys and stuff. And then um, I remember this kid named Tommy Young came up to me. He's like, hey, that's our bombs right there. They they had bombed the cafeteria. Right. And I didn't know at the time, but I was standing in the middle of the whole crew. Right. And I was like, yo, that shit's whack. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is so fucking bust. That shit is terrible. <laughs> and all of them were like looking at me, and I didn't know why. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those days, man, I was a little knucklehead, so I yeah. didn't care, you know? Right. And then, um, yeah, and then Todd later told me that everyone was like conspiring to like mob me. me. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. mob me. And then uh, Todd told the story to Keone Payton. Right. Shout out to Farmer's Market for Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Keone actually loved the fact that I dissed him in front of like, the whole group. He loved it. He gave me respect for it. So Keone's on the same age? One year older. Older. But Tommy's younger than you, right? Yeah, Tommy was younger. Than you. so but after that, we were cool, man. Like, nice. They, Keone, you know, he was the, the dude, so he's like, yeah, don't fuck with him. Nice. And then I ended up becoming crew with him. Was that well? Who's there? Was Brandon there? OG Dick Brandon, Dog? Brandon, yeah, OG Dick oh, Dog. Who went to the That's right. Yeah, they Brandon and Darren got kicked out of the private school. Yeah, oh, serious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. OG Dick Dog went to Midpac. Wow. So yeah. OG, so that case, so like the OG crew was like Dick Dog, DB, DB Hate Killers, Barry, Bumblebee, oh, yeah, DB. BT. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, that's kind of a crazy that thing. That was a great crew. Huh? Think about it. Well, if you think about it, everyone from the crew elevated no matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keone was a super pro. He became a super pro. Yeah. Um, Todd ended up going to Battle of the Year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the illest influential B-Boy boys yeah. in, the, in the world, right. actually. Yeah. Shout out. Um, Barry ended up becoming a naughty ass DJ. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, wow. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's, it's was dope. Corey kicking it with you guys, too? Corey, too. Super wow. sick artist. Insane artist. Slept Probably on the Illis. Illis painter. Yeah. I think the last time I heard what he was doing is he 
he was, he had a job in New York. Um, he was those dudes that would fix paintings in the museums and shit. What? Wow. Yeah, like white like, glove kind yeah, of? Yeah, fixing old cracks and shit. Wow. So that normally, like Renaissance style paintings. Wow. Yeah. So then when did you start Hidden Habitats then? When, was, when did that? Hidden was Habitats there? was when my boy Philly from DC moved. He came to Hawaii. Uh, to for um, college, he went to HPU. Absolutely, oh. that's a crazy story. So basically, <laughs> my sister. Oh, this weird dude calls. We thought he was a black dude because he had hella East Coast Ebonics, you know. Yeah. He, yeah. Talking, <laughs> he was talking. He called my. He called my sister. Oh, he called our house. Yeah. Out of some, off, like out of nowhere. Right. And um, it was the wrong number. Like some girl he met in Italy was like, "Oh, here's my number. I'm going to HPU. I'm going to be in Hawaii." Right. Calls up the number, ends up becoming like ends up my sister. So my he goes, "Hey, can I ask you one thing? Is there hip hop out there in Hawaii?" And she goes, "Oh yeah, my brother rhymes." What? So she passed the phone to me, and I was like, "Yeah, well, you know, we have a little hip hop scene over here." My <laughs> yeah, it was it was crazy. So then we kept in touch that way, and then I I remember when he was arriving, I was going to spend that summer, uh, that summer in Vegas. Right. And then he showed up in Hawaii and everyone's bugging out. My brother's like, dude, we met Philly, he's a fucking Filipino dude. <laughs> and I was just like, what? No way. He sounds like a brother. Yeah, big time. <laughs> so then I come home and we meet at we were on. He has he had a thing called a baby and it's like it's fucking Sony Walkman with two speakers. Damn. He would carry it on beats. <laughs> So we're sitting in the middle when we're mom, and I meet him, and I'm like, what the fuck? We look like brothers. Cause we yeah, yeah, I thought you guys were brothers. Yeah, we totally look, he looked like we're related, you know? And that fool, right when he meets me, he fucking give me a hug, and boom, pushes play. Starts freestyling in the middle of the <laughs> Everyone's just staring, and I'm like, damn, this kid is ill, you know? Like, Philly really was like an insane uh, freestyle. So back then, who rhymed back then? Me before even before Philly, it was just me uh, and this guy <coughs> named Fuck, what was his name? Oh, I forgot his name. There's only two of us. So this is this. He hasn't even, he hasn't even two habitats in. No, it was yet. just you guys meeting Philly when I met Philly. Oh, yeah, hanging I out. have a funny story about that that rhyming shit though. So uh, I just started freestyling, and then uh, remember uh, Beastie Boys concert? Yeah, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and there was the after party at the Sugar, Sugar Mill. I was there, yeah. You remember that shit? Yeah. Uh, so basically, they were like, oh, MC's to the stage. And you know, we're knucklehead east side dudes. were like, oh, shit, open mic. But it wasn't yeah. open mic. It was like Kumanakas. Right. They're set. Oh, I didn't know that. And we got on stage and we just grabbed the mic like we're getting ready to fuck your feet Oh, oh shit. Well, it was just me. Oh, and the guy's name was uh, Edmund. Edmund, I remember him. I yeah. remember him. So then, right there, Humanakas got mad because you know back then they were known to be like that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did. And they told us to step outside and kill you. Like, oh, step outside. All right, let's go and so fucking so square <laughs> up. So we go outside and shout out to Hao. Like Aaron came out, started fucking, did a little scratch like with his mouth, started beatboxing, and then one by one, fucking, uh, fucking, uh, what's it, Tasho. Yeah. All of them, one yeah, by yeah. one, just fucking decipher bullying all of us. Yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we got so fucked so, up. Okay, but that, I was there. Me, EP was there. Yeah. And, but then, uh, remember that one outside? But then I was. But then, so where did uh, Kimo come in, Casper? Because he, he, he knew both of you guys. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. He was stuck. Because I was we were watching it. And it was like, and he and he kind of went in and freestyled like mm -hmm. almost like a peace treaty thing. Like yeah, he, he was, was trying, trying to. Yeah, and I was like, to connect us. But then that's 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 what sparked our high. Like. Right. After we got fucked up by Humanakas, <laughs> we went back to Kanye and we went in the lab. Like We just freestyled uh, every day oh, because we were like, fuck those guys, we're going to serve them. <laughs> that's what we talking? miss about those days, man. That's, that's what we talked about. That's what we talked, right. We yeah. went into training right, with yeah. those dudes. You know? Right, you're not going to see that. No, no, no. Nah, nah. you with Casper? He's, he's, he's still around. around, yeah. Okay. He's still around. Aisha. Aisha, yeah. yeah. And he has, uh, he makes like, uh, like shoot, almost like... Electronic, kind of housey, hip hop y. Oh, really? Oh, he makes beats? Yeah, yeah he makes beats and oh, rhymes yeah. and sings. It's like a song club. So, so wow. trippy, so different. He still rhymes, but okay. he's an all the Pill albums. He still spits bad, like really good. Because that was another one back in the day. No, he, yeah. he was dope, dude. He was yeah. freaking rhyme. Oh, man, when he, when he 
fucking battled uh, Abyss. Okay. Uh, like on Itaro show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, he took everybody out. He yeah. was like listening to Sophia take out fucking. Was, uh, yeah. 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 He went one by one, just slaughtering both. Yeah, he was dope. So how did he? How's he? How's he in between both you guys? Then? Oh, because he was from the east side. Oh, but how's he down? But he lived. He oh, he went, went to, to Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Nah, so that's right. Roosevelt. That's right. But yeah, okay. so yeah, with the Philly thing, when Philly came, he changed the whole our whole game because the way he thought, yeah. the way he made beats, he taught fame how to make beats on the yeah. like Gemini sampler. I use that too, yeah. Wow. He taught fame how to make beats, and then he also taught us how to, because um, he came from D.C. where they had an awesome collective called Freestyle Union. Right, right. And it was like a freestyle seminar. You couldn't swear, you couldn't cuss, nothing. Right. And they would throw topics at you. And then you had to like tell stories. Like it was such a ill like Damn. program. So then Philly applied that to us. So we used to go to we used to go to Painkiller's house, and he would open the dictionary, write down words, and we'd put it all in a bowl. That's dope. And you, even if you didn't rhyme, you had to fucking right, participate because right, right. Killing would beat your ass. <laughs> so fucking, we had all the, the words in a bowl, and we'd pass it around. We'd take a word and rhyme. Right. Yeah, and then um, Glam would spin. Sick. And we would go in the cipher and we all had to use the word somehow. That's dope. And, uh, and we all got good, man. I mean, shoot, I can see why because, not. Because, I mean, yeah. we had, and Keone yeah. would put words up on the wall, like, to, to practice his fucking wow. vocabulary and everything. See, see but Keone rhymed. For a little bit, yeah. That's pretty sick. Did, did OG Dick Dog rhyme too? He did, right? Yeah, he did too. He did. Yeah, they had a fucking crew, him, Barry, and someone else. They had, a, like, a little... They had a crew, a rap crew. Really? Yeah. Yeah. See, I just remember him from just that was short out. though, really short. But it was cool, man, because downstairs there was a Corey's house, and uh, Corey's house was right across the street from right. Amy's, and we Jesus. had a place called the the Bomb Shelter, and that's right. where we practiced b boying and shit. Dude, that's dope. It was like it was a cool setup. But yeah, Philly Philly inspired all of us to do all that shit. He showed us yeah. endo side geeks, and, nice. and so I, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and listening to them like really up our hip hop. So then that was like all late 90s and then Habitat. Six. And then what what was the transition then from Habitat to doing what you do now? Oh well we yeah, we were oh actually yeah, we we're freestyling at Keone's house and I, I said it in a rhyme. I said hi Habitat to Oh wow. And Philly came oh, up to me and was like, okay. yo, we should use that as our crew name. We ended up using it as a crew But you're at that time you're just still piecing bombing. Was, yeah, I was still bombing. Oh that's stuff. But no but what you, you, cause you always, I remember you always character, you do a lot of characters. I was a character. Character guy, right? Yeah. Diaper. <laughs> I got old stuff. No! Yeah. Oh. I got old, I got old stuff. Diaper! <laughs> no, that was sick. But no, I mean, catch the weight. So because, yeah. you, do, cause because you did characters back in the day, yeah. is that is that why you started? I mean, we all know the story of, if you don't know it, just go look it up on how I created the panda and everything. Yeah. But did that influence you of, in the 3D days of characters to the fact that you have a character now. Oh yeah, I mean, people don't know I used to draw this this grizzly bear. Right. Like all the time. I don't know if you check out Hisham's old shows. I got it. Man. Weird ass yeah. grizzly bear. I used to right, draw right. Like, that kind of looked like a teddy bear. Yeah. And yeah. It, it spawned from that. But yeah, I mean, I, I could do throwies right. and blockbusters, yeah, but yeah. I wasn't I wasn't really too into like. The wild style piecing and stuff right, like that. Right. I was more of a character dude. So when did you see the? I mean, just a prick. I've been through the whole journey with you. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. But so, people don't know where was the turning point when you realized you could make your art. Your yeah. Career? After just to kind of fast forward everything, we can go oh, my, my first show at Kicks Hawaii. And then it clicked. You're like, dude, this is it. Yeah. Because Kicks Hawaii had that show with. Lalo and, right. and Fitted, right. those right. three, yeah. Yeah. which is crazy because they're yeah. all cool, you know, yeah. like, working together. Yeah. So I remember, remember I had like 90 pieces in that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Majority was pandas. Is that the upstairs show? Upstairs, or the show? Okay. yeah. What was that, like 2000? What would you have? 2002? Yeah, 2002. 2002. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my show was And it was like Swami style, so people yeah. could buy a right. piece and take it home with them. Right. And the pieces were like, 40 bucks and up. I think yeah. the most expensive yeah, yeah, yeah. piece I had was 350 bucks. Yeah, I just uh, 
He has it. It's an elephant. It's not even a panda. <laughs> <laughs> but you had your, uh, your dolls too, your rice dolls, huh? Oh, I did, huh? yeah, and I did rice dolls. Right. And those yeah. sold too. So I yeah. sold like That's the rice almost dolls. everything that night. And I remember I wasn't even thinking about it. And my, my girl at the time was like, how much did you make? And I was just like, oh shit, I made money tonight. <laughs> and I felt my pocket and I felt a lot of money. I went in the bathroom and I counted. Shit, I mean, 1800 bucks. Damn. Like, it was the first time I ever Man. sold that much yeah. art. And like, that was your first show? That was my first, yeah. I mean, not counting the Haitian. Right, 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 right. But that was my first solo show. Right. Wow. So wow. right after that, I was just like, damn. And I was working hella jobs, man. I had no right. days off. I was working at Kimo Beans Coffee. And at Kicks, right? Borders and Kicks. Kicks right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no That's days right. off, so I would work like maybe two hours after. Like, from like two to like four, and then I go to sleep and wake up again and go back and do the whole thing. Over there. So from then till you moved to Seattle, right? You moved to Seattle after that, right? How long was it? What year was that? Yeah, well, 2002 to 2000, and oh, just that one year, I, I information and kicks was getting me shows. Remember, right. I started sending yeah. my art right. yeah, yeah, yeah. San Francisco, my right. first international show was Montreal. Yeah, and then I was trying to. What was your name back then? It was Wobot. It was Wobots. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It was, was it Angry Wobots? No, it was Angry, Angry was in the end. Just yeah. Wobots. Angry, yeah. Angry came in through the kick show because Ian was like, well, we'll call the show. And I was like, fuck, Wobot is boring. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just put Angry Wobot. Right, right. He's like, man, you're not even angry. He sounds good. He sounds good. He sounds good. And, it, and I, it was never meant to be a name. It just became, right. people would be like, hey, you're Angry Wobot. And so I'd be like, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, that's the name of the show. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So that was pre Panda, or Panda was created the Wobot Panda. No, the Panda was created during the Studio One. Okay. Poetry Slams. Right, right, right. Uh, but yeah. then it was the experiment because I was paint once a month, and right. no matter after I painted that first Angry Panda, someone would come up and be like, "Hey, can I buy an Angry Panda from you?" Right. So then I just kept on. You know, I kept on painting them for people, and then all of a sudden the show came up, and I was just like, damn, I want to paint a shitload of pandas. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, and it just fucking it went viral, it? Dude, and it, you know, fortunately, I mean, I've been full-time since all day. Hey. So after the kid show, what were some of the other big shows you did after that? For you? And what year did you move oh, permanently? Was, no, it was uh, the information, the, the Nalu Bog show, which oh, was yeah, the yeah, pinnacle, because yeah, yeah. I was... Unknown, right? Had David Cho on the show, oh, yeah. Invisible Man, Andy Howell, uh, <laughs> Hayes. Uh, so you met Mainframe? Mainframe was in the yeah. show. So all these dudes were just not heavy, yeah, heavy. heavy dudes. These yeah. are good. Yeah. I was collecting magazines and books yeah. with these dudes <laughs> in there. And they, they were the right. dudes I would look at to like, I mean. It was a surfboard? That was a surfboard. A surfboard show. Okay. And it was, you know, before, I mean, I hated the term street, yeah. street art, right. but that's yeah. the community I'm in. And, that's what it is. is, so that's what it is. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I had to bring it because information was like, yo, we're gonna do the show, and they gave me the, the roster, and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, what the hell am I gonna do? Like, these guys are all gnarly better. Yeah. I mean, fucking Future was in the oh. show. Oh, yeah. What year was this? This was what? 05. Oh, okay. Information okay. award, yeah. yeah that was the award. So I had to bring it, so I turned my surfboard into a kayak. Remember? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I, first time sewing too, I, I made a kayak and then I made a digital, ski, like, you know, digital camel which yeah. just started. Yeah. So I made a fucking skin to go over the kayak and I had a stuffed animal and then there was a remote control vehicle for the stuffed right. animal so it was like Lancy. Wow. Did you sell it? You sold it? Some guy named, uh, shout out to Giorgio, he bought it. He's uh, wow. from Italy. Not Giorgio, Giorgio. Not Giorgio, Giorgio. The promoter Giorgio. No, this, <laughs> this guy Giorgio was. A, we sent him out. I don't know if you guys heard of the FOMO. It was a project with Delta and, and Future. Oh, snap. It was a whole club in France, I think. I think it was France. But he was the art curator for them. Wow. And he was coming to Hawaii a lot. And he bought it. Yeah, he bought it because the year before that, I was also doing the remote control dunks. Right, 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 right. So then he commissioned me to do a dunk for Mark Parker for Nike. Wow. And then I didn't want to sell it to him. I gave it to him as a gift. Like yo, just give it to Mark. Right. Right. Mark Parker yeah, on yeah. my own duck. Like, yeah, yeah. Duck. and then uh, yeah, the duck never happened. But <laughs> but you know that that year later, Giorgio ended up buying my piece and got it shipped. And that's when you felt the kind of the, 
the changing of like. Well, yeah, I mean, even Bonito gave me an interview. Oh, it's right, the same, same same issue as Dalek. So I was floating, man. I was just like, yo, this shit can really. Yeah. Man, was that around the time you did the video with Bumblebee where you guys were like oh, in a hangar? When, when was that? that? You, were, you came back for that. Europe trip. You remember oh, this video? Right? Remember the video where I'm battling Bumblebee? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, painting and the movie's scratching. And yeah. they're, they're in a hangar. They're in an airport hangar. Yeah. Just information. Uh, shout out to Kelly and John Hook and all them. Oh, oh Chris. Yeah. They put that together. But yeah, that was a dope ass video. Yeah. Like, fucking airplane and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Guarantee you see it. Right? It's probably yeah. it's on YouTube now. I had a string of good yeah. luck during that time, man. Right? Because on top of that, David Cho had gone in. Tokyo, right. and he wasn't allowed back in the country, so he they stayed come back. Right. Yeah, and then June gave him my number, right. and I ended up taking him around. This is way before he blew, blew up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was already big and up the playground, but right. you know, Not I, as big I, as I, as I, as had, I had this guy like I'm kicking it with this dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? He gave me a half an original from him. Was crazy. And then um, after that, <laughs> and Powell, skateboard right. legend, yep. came, yeah. and you know, he asked June. Shout out to June. He was like, "Hey, I want to paint. Right. Is there anyone on the island that can I can paint with?" And when Jim gave him my number, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. New deal? Yeah, like, yeah. what the hell? Is skate legend yeah, wants yeah, to paint yeah. with me? And, right. yeah, so, yeah, and then I became good friends with Andy. I ended up doing a two-man show with him at That's Eric right. Studio. What was it called? That's Studios. Next. Ah, I forget. Gallery spot. Uh, all the original people from Bevy. I can't even think. 39? 39. 39, 39, 39 Hotel, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, from having all that connections and, I mean, they didn't really help me get anything, right. but just being affiliated. Yeah, yeah, right. like, well, and and this, all alone. Yeah, and this is before all that Instagram shit, like, yeah. like social media right. was my so when did you, when did you? So you're in Hawaii, when did you decide that I need to move to LA? Or I need to move to Orange County, where did you move to? No, I wanted to move to, uh, I wanted to move to the Bay, because at that time, up the playground was starting to blow up. Right, right, right. San Flores. Right, yeah. That was big enough. Yeah, it was huge. But, you know, the Bay Area is real tight. They're real elitist about just keeping their click. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I met a girl from Seattle. <laughs> and I'm moving to Seattle. Okay. And then, and then it, it just worked out because Circle of Fire. Right, right. Right. That was a trend, right? Like, a lot of guys would move to Seattle. Yeah, a lot of guys would move to Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the line. Yeah, Barry moved to and Seattle. Todd moved to Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Coffin was out there. Right? Yeah, Lucky moved to Seattle. Yeah, yeah Freaky Monkey moved to Seattle. I was there before them, though. But you were before all of them. Oh, all of them. It was Todd first, and then Barry, and then me. Oh, okay. 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 So, so remember Seattle. my car accident was in oh, the that's right. That's right, yeah. And that's what made me oh. move. Ah, that's right. Uh, that's, well, we could be going on for like, yeah. at least 69 more hours. Right. But yeah. <laughs> we, I got, we got to address this though, because like, there was, there was a thing that we would do right. after the clubs. This would be going on. You remember this. We'd always be like out late, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and we would always go eat Sonoyas. <laughs> and then we go to Zippy's and then like we there was one time where we it was like it was us three and Darren. Okay. Damn. And we 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 just talk story literally like For this hours. right now yeah. Yeah. till at least seven in the morning. What were we doing in our lives back then? Yeah, that's how it was. But that's back how it was. So. Right. Say bye. He's kicking. We would say bye like a hundred times. Yeah. Say bye. Like, bye. Oh, you, <laughs> you moved down the parking lot. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Sit down. Like, uh, like, oh, oh, yeah. No, I gotta go. Okay, cool. Yeah. You move by a car. Sit by the car. Like, oh, shake it, shake it. Yeah, it's your boss fault, bro. Yeah. It's just a master of handshakes. It was it. No one, no one could say goodbye back then. Dude, no responsibility. Yeah, no responsibility. Yeah, you know, you work, go work late, go work. No need to worry. Let's go work at the market and then give yeah. you know people free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was a that was a thing though. That was a thing. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like you're welcome, bro. Thanks, <laughs> hey, I got poke. I got steaks. I got. Nah, that does. Everyone. Supplies. Everyone had like. A, you came through. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. it, it was right next door to HIC, yeah. which you had. Cam, which you think that was the parking dude at the Varsity Theater, man. That's right. You should just pull what I did. Pull. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh my god. <laughs> but that, that, we had. That, I remember like the all one of those. That was Murderer's Row. We had we had Cam and Blaze. Yeah. Uh, HIC. HIC. Yeah. 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 Sarahs. Sarahs. Yeah. Oh shit. That was right, and you had Chris Nakano, yeah. Big Lifestyles was at Sarah's. Yeah, and then you guys oh, were all summers were all down. down Say hi to everybody, walk down, get your free steaks. Get your free stuff. Free steaks, free poke. <laughs> free steaks, yeah. free poke. Wait, yeah, yeah. Like, Beep. That was it. Beep. Okay, bye. Yeah. I'm not going to reveal. Yeah. Oh. <laughs>
Anyway, so what about what's now then? So yeah, after all great. that went down, like walls. Well, you're in town, back in town now. What were you? What are you working on as you return here? Uh, I came. Well, I skipped. I usually do Art Basel, Miami. I've been doing that the last eight years, and it's usually like the first week of Miami. And um, what is what is that? Yeah, Art Basel, like, like the fucking uh, like it's like the festival for okay. for uh, like at the end of the year right. for artists. Like just fucking literally a hunt. Hundreds of artists painting walls, right. doing art shows. Um, Swiss Beats has his little fucking exhibition with all his artists. Nice. Like everyone's there. Every who who is. And it's going on right now. Mm. No, it's done now. It's done. But I mean, shit. Last year we did a fucking awesome show. Right. I'm still floating on it with uh, yeah. like who sang a lot. There you go. Right. Um, yeah. Was with Wu Tang. Right. And then uh, was it Rick Paul was there? Yeah. Or so we we did a show with. Uh, with RZA's 36 Chambers. Okay, it's clothing line, right? Yeah, so they, their Wu Tang was already going to be in Miami, and um, my homeboy uh, Jose Merch, shout out right. to my dog, he uh, Metatron's Blade, that's how he goes by. Yes. Um, he was like, Yeah, RZA, there's a, you guys are going to be down here, why don't you guys do a pop up? Yeah. 36 Chambers pop up. So apparently, 36 Chambers is RZA's clothing line. Right. Because someone owns the Wu Tang right, right. name. Right, yeah. right. Which originally was yeah so he has a side clothing line so Rizzo was like okay cool yeah that'd be cool if we do a pop-up and and Jose was like let's do a show too art show <clears throat> he goes okay I'm down for that um just show me some of the artwork that's gonna be right, in right. so shout out to my boy Chris Brand he's like a gnarly ass Japanese traditional tattoo artist yeah, yeah, yeah. he created this gnarly ass piece that reminded me of Fist of the North Star okay. it was basically cool. a dude like getting punched Right. And his face is like exploding and there's just like ten fists coming so, yeah. out. Like, you know, like, star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, said, he sent it to That's Rizzo and Rizzo was like, What the fuck? This is the, the artwork that you yeah, guys yeah, are putting yeah. in the show. Because they did shows before in New York and it was just like knucklehead graffiti yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, real like half ass show, right, like, right. show. So he's like, Alright, well, we'll do the show. I'm gonna give you guys eleven tracks from the the the, the new Wu Tang album that Mathematics produced, Sick. and each artist has to do their rendition of the track. Wow! Wow! So I got Hood Go Bang with uh, nice. with uh, Red Man. Okay. So I actually stayed away from pandas. I painted a a samurai kid in a samurai helmet and mask, and he has a funk doctor Spock sweater. Nice. Uh, and How big is that piece? Uh, 24 and all the pieces sold, or is it? I kept mine. They kept yours. Yeah, I wanted to keep mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then Rizzo was like, "Oh, it's on." Yeah. And then, you know, he saw all the pieces started rolling in. He was just bugging out on all the pieces. Dude. And then um, he was like, "Well, how's about this? Why don't you go ahead?" He gave him a budget. He gave my boy a budget. Yeah. He said, "Why don't you rent some tables? Uh, I'm gonna have mathematics come down, and then I'm gonna have Raekwon." To a set. Sick. So we're like, what the fuck? You know, like, <laughs> Holy shit, bucket of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then, so Jose's like, hey, Riza asked me if I know any DJs. And I was like, yeah, you're fu- this is your city. You're yeah, in Miami. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you got hella DJ homies. He's like, no, fool, I want you to spin oh, shit. <laughs> at the show. And I'm like, fuck that. You want me to open for my house? shit, dude. I, you know, at this time, I'm like, what two years deep in right, DJing? Right. Like I, I can only mix. I'm not like a you know like a veteran DJ. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know my 62 yet. I don't know all the buttons <laughs> and anything on it. So I'm like fuck it. Okay, so he he was just like man up, dude. This is gonna look good. You you have a piece. You have a mural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the wall, you have a gnarly ass piece, and they're gonna see you behind the table. Right. right? Yeah. He's like, dude, pussy, everything's gonna come in. Yeah. Like, oh, I got it, girl. I don't need pussy. <laughs> He's like, dude, it's just gonna look fucking awesome, man. You gotta rock it. So I was just like, all right, I'll do it. Man, I'm gonna do it. And then, yeah, so I spun a set. I didn't know that like, they were here yet. And when mathematics came, it fucking gave me mad daps. So Damn. Like, oh, what the hell? So but it's standing behind. I was, dude, it was like boiler room, like Raquan and fucking. Mathematics would be on the side like that. <laughs> 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 like, hey. right. But yeah, hey, dude, we rocked that show and it was crazy. And Ray got yeah. on the verses. Ray so. did every fucking, every dope fucking shit he knows. He knows 
for you. He was mad cool too. And he was How bad. tall is Rayquan? He looks short. He's like my height, dude. He's not that tall. That guy, stays, that guy stays fresh though. You know what I mean? Like all the guys. He was cool as shit, man. Mathematics was mad cool too. And it was just one of those. That was last year. That was last year. Uh, so yeah, so this year uh, I wanted to go again and right. I usually do I usually do juxtapose house and my homies we usually throw like we usually come out the box because all the homies like do my all my colleagues they're all gnarly. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's yeah. different levels, right? You know, there's like guys that are selling pieces for like forty G's, you know, and then in between, yeah, and, then, yeah, you know, yeah. and then there's me, like the most expensive piece I probably sell is like maybe five G's. You know I mean? <laughs> but I mean, like, so we usually try to come up with a show that's right. just like out the box gnarly, where they're like, yeah, yeah. how the fuck did they pull it off? Nice. You know? So originally we wanted to do Zarface. Nice. Because when I was in Wooster, right, that's I got Colorado. Out. No way. No, uh, New England. Yeah, New England, New England. Massachusetts, right there. Yeah. Yep, Massachusetts. I ended up linking up with uh, 7L and Esoteric. There you go. Yeah. And then, so I've been in con I've been in close contact with it. It's, it's crazy. It's a weird thing, like chatting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chatting with Esoteric. It's right. Crazy. You know, Stay crazy. alert. Because he's a fucking nerd, you know what yeah. I mean? He writes for Marvel, dude. He writes what? stories for Marvel. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right. That's a surprise. So I told him, dude, I want to do Miami, and I was thinking about doing a Zarpe show. But we couldn't find funding because uh, we wanted them to perform and wanted, wanted all the artists to do Zarface themed pieces. But he's like, oh, it's all good, man. We got to do something. So we're planning to work on something. We don't know what, but right. I want to. Uh, and um, so I didn't end up going because my mom's like, yo, your sister's coming from Georgia. It's the first time the whole family's going to be together. Right. So I was like, well, fuck Miami. I'm just going to stay in Hawaii. And that's why I'm here. And then nice. I, that's why you're here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a Christmas, huh? What a Merry Christmas, Happy everybody! Yeah. Have a merry <laughs> and to well, all a good night. Yes. Wait, yeah. you here you're painting. Wait, before you go, yeah. you're painting somewhere. Well, you um, are painting. I'm somewhere. painting Barb everywhere now. Right. This is where you just came from tonight. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paint everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. This is real right here. Look at that. And you're available for commissions and. Well, the private uh, paintings. Of course he is. Small pieces. Small pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just but trying, yeah, so to, so really get I'm trying to finish my piece by the latest by Thursday, and then the reveal is this Saturday. I'm going to be spinning with uh, Roger from Aloha. Nice. Yeah. So. Oh, this Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. Don't yeah. come because I don't want to be judged. It's <laughs> 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 around, right? You're good, right? You're good. <laughs> Right, you get surrounded. It's a lot of right. Everything. Shift but, right, shift left, you good. <laughs> my thing is, dude, like, I'm really comfortable on my 62. So, and oh, I yeah. don't spin out. I don't spin out ever. And I tell people, I, dude, I get people asking me all the time for people from Long Beach, LA, like, oh. like, and nah, dude, I don't, I'm not that kind of DJ, man. I just spin at home or spin for right. homies, you know what I mean? And my thing is because I don't know people's equipment. I don't even know my oh, equipment. So when I, I show up to a club and it's just like giant. It's a panic shirt. situation. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh fuck, I don't know how to use that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. It's you real. Know, panic. If you really want to, you do a writer request. I need a. Oh, I've done that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've done that for just, Denver. Colorado. You can do that too. You're like Daniel Wobot DJ now. Nah, not even. Actually, can yeah. yes. Dude, no. just do it. We're getting here. Yeah. If someone wants you at this point, be like, I need a sixty-two. Do you know me? Two twelve. <laughs> but I don't even when I DJ I don't even go under any of those names. Yeah, that's right. Give it a name. Yeah, oh. that's another English. another name, bro. What's the other English? Yeah, I know, can't tell you. What's the name? No, it's I go. <laughs> you know, I'm fucking Chavo Valley, man. So inspired by fucking Goonies. Uh, yeah. I did this. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Based off of Data's belt. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's just so weird. <laughs> like, yeah. the yeah. And I like it because people fucking, you know, the young kids don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's always the oldest. They're like, what? That's right. Dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how we know we all. We yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds a little fun. That's great. Data's belt, man. That's, that's my DJ. That's, that's, that's your DJ name. Yep. Uh, nice. There you go. Nice, you can yes. see Data's belt spinning through the peach. No, no, no. I'm sorry. We're telling the world. Oh, that might be a reason to go. Just for fun, man. Just for fun. Yeah. Yeah.
And so, then, you know, and then I also have Metal Fortress. Right. I'm actually working yeah. on an EP right now with my oh. yeah. um, one of the One of the dudes producing is Silent John. I don't know if you guys know Silent John. Silent John? Yeah. He works with Scatterbrain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's just going to be each other. I'm just doing it for fun, man. I'm just going to release it and not even try to sell it. That's how. I just want people to listen to it. Right, right. But, yeah, we're called Metal Fortress. Shout out to Captain Travis because he's the one that made the M6. Yeah. And right. it's uh, Data's Belt and Metatron's Blade from Miami. Nice. And then, okay. so when are you leaving Hoi? Do I, I don't know. Oh, you stay here with the power. Oh, no. totally Maybe. Oh, wow. I might get another job, that's why, in oh. January. So. Just, oh, you're you stay. I can't announce it, but it's, it's big. Oh, so if you just keep stacking, you might just... Because it's, it's literally like it's a month and a half away. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm used to being away from home, but it, it all lies on my girl, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pissed yeah. off she is. <laughs> <laughs> so her deal is... We're her, leaving her, next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just don't go to my DJ. No, go by having no need. Now, the original deal was if you spend Christmas with your family, you right. come home and spend New Year's with me. Well, that's good. But then that's I told her, oh, I'm going to get this job. And she's like, damn, so if you get this job, just fly me to Hawaii. Oh, there you go. There we go. So she right. made the Hawaii miles, cuz. Yep. Like she's a wife. Oh, that's mine too. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you voted me, boo. Run them off. Text right off too. All, all day long. See? This is, this is real exciting. I don't know, Wolves could be here, bro. You get the DJ Stay up on Mitzvah. Your blue out. I want to see you do a prom, bro. Oh, That'd be funny. A reunion prom. <laughs> Class of 95. They <laughs> were oh, oh, killing everything 95 BPM. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing fast. It's funny because oh, people will hear this and they're going to say, see, right. I don't, see, you guys are DJs, man. There's, I took one gig in Hollywood. It was. In the Hollywood Hills, it was at this mansion Damn. from all week. Okay. And he's like, yo, they're willing to pay here. And I was just like, word, okay, shit, I'll do it. Can I play anything I want? He's like, yeah, you can play anything you oh, want. Okay. So I get down there, set up. I'm like, right. oh, this is cool. So, so you're in Hollywood, a Hollywood mansion. It's a fucking mansion. And, you, and you're there. spinning it. I'm spinning it. That's good. You play any, any, you any rock, eh? Until he's you're playing the controls. At the car. Yo, I, I play, play shit like Test one. I play fucking. I play Scott Larkin. You play Scott Larkin? What? In, in Miami. And this dude rolls up. Like, Shut up. Hella happy. Like, oh my god, what the fuck? Like, are you serious? Totally high on coke. Dude, he was true. It was like an older guy. He, he gave me a hug. He's like, yo, dog, I, I can't believe you're playing this track. Like, I can't. I, you know, on the real DJ, that might be the greatest. Feeling ever. Oh, yeah. Because if someone comes up to you and oh, says, yeah. Dude, I don't believe you're playing that. Right. This, dude, that's always a shopping Well, at the Wu Tang show, I was playing all old school boom bap. You know? like, when I played nine, there must have been like fucking 15 heads in there that are like our age. Like, whoa! <laughs> like, singing along, you know what I mean? Like, it that's was always cool, a man. Thing, yeah. oh, That's crazy. Crazy stuff, man. I tell you what, we gotta. But yeah, you know, like, these French cats okay. showed up. They're all young, young ass millennial cats, and they're like, you know, they're fucking requesting all that radio shit. What'd you play then? I don't have it, The dude. French. The French. That's why. You play French hip hop, bro. You play French toast, bro. <laughs> French fries. I, I play brand new, uh, what do you call it? Nubian. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, damn. Yeah. But they're even, that's even old to them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so young. Wow. Oh, that was boy. terrible, man. So, <laughs> they stressed me out. How it's only fitting we're in the show. Talking okay. about the French. And the French. <laughs> <laughs> Only fitting yeah. for Christmas. Final words for Andy Wolbach before the end of the year. Final thoughts. Final things. Um, know your roots. Learn to laugh at yourself. And shout out to all, all, all of my crews. Yeah. NTL, Sandlot, Metal Fortress, Light Sleepers, Bird. AM. Everyone. All of them, yeah. Every one of them. Shout out to my brother, Nervous. Where? Nervous. Is that yeah, it? And shout out to y'all, dude. Shit. Thank you for coming on, guys. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, Good stuff. We go somewhere else right now. Dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can talk all night. Yeah. Come on. This is going to be, yeah. Give me two, two more. So, is that it for two specials? That's it, man. That's it. Wanna... Sleep time. Don't mind. Am I finishing this off? The finish it, man. Typical... Yes. Do it. Sleep Do it. time's over. Cap with the Catalyst. DJ Zach Morris. Wolves. Timer. Dance Bell. All that good stuff. Wow. Hawaii Hip Hop. Still up.
Yeah. It's over. Sleep time's over. Woo! Beep, 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 beep. <laughs>